Yeah. Building on a Wednesday. A2HH Live. Coop, how you doing, sir? I'm good. Uh, everybody that's guest. been... Yeah, yeah. Everybody that's been watching this show and following us for years knows that I used to live in California, and I met this guy named Obi who ended up helping executive produce my first album that I put out on iTunes. Well, Obi came in last night from Columbia, because when I talk about how I have a friend who lives in Medellin, guess what? Mm. Same guy. So he's yeah. here. Um, Obi's, Obi's email used to be the Uber man, and that's exactly like who he is. Obi's traveled to like over 80 countries now. Yeah, probably something like that. Something like that. Obi's, oh, wow. He's literally traveled over 80 countries, so he's got a wealth of like worldly knowledge and experience. Plus, he used to make dope ass beats and dope ass <laughs> films. And, and, and much like you, Mike, he's a Taurus. His birthday was Cinco de Mayo. Your birthday is Saturday. Yep. yep. And much like you, Taurus. Tauruses, y'all all seem to be big Neptunes fans because all he used to give me was a bunch of Pharrell and Chad sounding ass beats when I lived in Cali. <laughs> so, you know, I know. recently kind of. I'm going to let him talk and I'm going to slide right quick. Go well, ahead. Well, welcome to the show, Obi. Um, Thank you. Thank you, for me. you know, I got to ask, like, you know, what are some of your favorite Neptune produced tracks then since he introduced you in that way? And happy belated birthday, by the way, too. Thank you, man, and happy pre-birthday. Appreciate it. Season. <laughs> um, I would say you have to start, or well, for me, the one that really brought my attention to Neptune was Super Thug. Mm. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, I remember. Uh, <laughs> I, remember. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was that was one of those tracks where I listened to it and I was just like, this is, sounds like nothing else that's out right now. This shit um, sounds like the future, man. Or it did, like, yeah. 20 years ago. Still does, kind of. Um, yeah, yeah. Like all their stuff sounded timeless, which is why um, I think I was like, you know, I was just always like into into that sound. Um, uh, what do you see. feel about Busta Rhymes as I come back? I was listening to that the other day. I was like, man, that beat is crazy. The little synth and stuff <laughs> that uh, Chad was using. Yeah, I love that beat. I love that beat. It has that like just heavy, persistent. Mm. I don't know that that sound and that synth. Mm-hmm. It's not what they were using back then, man. Um, once again, I mean, well, you would say that was probably Chad, right? I mean, I, I know that Pro mm. did a lot of melody type stuff. So. Yeah. Exactly. I um, love the, um, I think that maybe Philly's Most Wanted, Please Don't Mind, might be a little bit more in Pharrell's chamber. Love that record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please Don't Mind yeah, was that. Philly's Most Wanted, Philly's Most Wanted, I feel like they're underrated. Yeah. I mean, like the flow. For real. Like, I feel like that already, no one ever talks about that. They're the one that kind of started the Philly thing, didn't they? They are. They are. It was, uh, because I feel like, weren't they a part of Major Gilly? Figures? Gilly was in Major Figures. They were too, I right? I feel like they were all connected some type of right. way because they knew Beans and like, yeah, because they're the ones that had the Rockefeller meeting before like Beans did. Yep. No, they took Beans to the Rock meeting. Mm-hmm. Right. That's how Beans. That's how Beans ended up in front of them. I think was because Philly's most wanted. I'm trying to think of Cam's name because it was one of them in particular that was like, you know, what happened to uh, Philly's most wanted? Does anybody know? You want to know what's crazy? No, no, no. You want to know what, Mike? We can have a Philly conversation with Red McFly because he's from Allentown. Okay. I wanted to talk to him. Yeah, they did like two albums, and then I never heard from him yet. I only yeah. heard the first album. I didn't even know there was a second album. I feel like there was a second album. I don't remember the second one. Somebody that mentioned might have been the mix around the time we were recording. I mean, you were probably listening to more stuff than I was, so yeah. I was back in the uh, early broadband days. I was just like search, search the the world for Neptune's beats, like some of the <laughs> stuff they did in France. Like mm. I would just, uh, yeah, I would wake up in the morning and see if I found like something new and dope that I, I you know, they didn't put out. Like almost like the, the clips uh, first album, which I guess did come out, but it wasn't like it was just super under, it wasn't yeah. pushed. It's on streaming platforms now. I think they just released it to streaming platforms maybe about six months ago, and I okay. remember going cool. back listening to him like, man, this stuff still hits now. Yeah, yeah. Come on, the one with the knock yourself out beat and all that. Yep. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the exclusive one I'm talking about. Yeah, right? Exclusive audio yep, footage. Exclusive yeah, exclusive audio footage. I had never heard it before. I always heard Coop talk about it. I knew it existed, but I never had heard it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, I know it existed, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was digging in the digital crates. I guess like back before, like after uh, it was right at the beginning where they're just putting out music on the internet. You just go find it. 
I love. Did, now, nah, did you get put onto that song that they did for Family? Uh, get down. Get down. I know about get down. Get down was crazy. Yeah. When the cars roll, love. Was that on the album or is that? It was a single. Did Family had an album or mixtape that that was on? I feel like Family had an album or mixtape. I don't know. I, it was like when the cars roll. Nice too. Yeah, it was like when the cars roll up and the windows roll down. Nigga, see the sawed off. Nigga, better hit the ground. Get busy. I know. Oh, I don't know. That beat was crazy. And see, that's yeah. what I love about All the right. Neptunes. They gave everybody heat. It wasn't about who was gonna True. be next, or, you know. And, and I have this criticism of Timbaland. I feel like Timbaland's only giving a list guys his best shit. The Neptunes would give anybody heat. That's true. That's fair. That is true. Yeah. Because you would be listening to songs from an artist you probably would never, never yeah. listen to. But that, that beat, something about it, that melody, that, that chorus, you're just like, okay. Look, Trail, House Party. That game with R and B artists because he gave like "Make It Hot" to Nicole Rick, so that must have been like a rapper bias. I will, I will give him that. He did give uh, "Make It Hot" to Nicole Ray, but the Neptunes yeah, did, you know, stuff queen. like that too, like, like uh, Latrell, oh, House Party. Do y'all remember that song? That beat was crazy. Oh, 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 by Latrell. Yeah, Latrell House Party. I know that was one of their artists, but still, yeah, that beat was crazy. Mad Max with a super oh, chat. The, old, the ODB stuff, nigga, please. <laughs> right. Man, Max. Be honest, I like all the stuff they did with Slim Thug. Oh, me too. Um, the, what, the almost, the already platinum? Yeah. There was yeah. some stuff on there. Yeah. Mad Max with the Super Chat says, LOL, uh, good cypher, Mike. You sounded like Andre, but Coop got you on that uh, to me. <laughs> Coop's verse was crazy. Shout out to Coop and his verse in the cypher. Appreciate the. The love on the cypher. Glad y'all liked it, man. We did that. You want to know what, Mike? I, I thought you came through with the delivery, and I came through with the wordplay, and I think that's kind of like what tandems are kind of supposed to do. It's yeah. just like one thing that, I mean, and people have kind of been saying this. They're like, you know, Coop, I wasn't expecting you to rap like that because you're such a nonsense. Nice like, I'm expecting you to rap faster. It's like, mm -hmm. well, and he knows this. Well, that was my problem, is that I rap like that too much and too fast, so all these guys had to give me all these fast-ass beats all the time because I kept <laughs> rapping like that. And so that's how this biggie picture ended up being given to me mm. because that was the producer's way of saying, hey, will you please, Armand, like, slow, like, just fuck up the flow a little bit and slow down and pace it and just do something instead of just yee. Biggie was incredible with it. I've been listening to Biggie all day, actually. Right. So, so yeah. it was more Biggie inspired with the flow, like some people have been saying. But that came from the teaching of it because it's like, oh no, 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 I can't just, I don't just rhyme one way, even at mm -hmm. this age anymore. So you know. And oh same man, thing with I you. listen, man. I am definitely out of shape. Number one, um, <laughs> and out of lyrical oh, shape, like, dude, that was. Are you haven't seen the site? Did you yeah. watch it? I know. I know, I you gotta to check. Okay, Man, yeah, I used to knock shit. Mike, Mike said seven figure deals on the table. That's a reality check. <laughs> <laughs> but, yo, man, I mean, I feel like back in the day, I would have just knocked that shit out, man. You gotta keep practicing whatever you're doing. You know, Mickey Fax came in the studio yesterday and knocked the verse out in like 10 minutes, if that. You know what I mean? I'm like, right. you can tell this dude right. does this every day. You know what I mean? So. And shout out to him. Jason Sweet with the, stu uh, with the Super Chat, excuse me, says, I'm getting Red McFly ready now. Just spoke to him. Thanks for the shout out. He's a Taurus too. His birthday was the first. Shout out to Red McFly. Shout out to the Tauruses in the hey, building. Look, shout, out, shout out to my nephew, Atlas, who was born yesterday. Shout out to my brother, Mike. Yeah. So another Taurus for you guys. <laughs> Jadarion with the Super Chat says, Mike's flow is ice cold, though. Appreciate the love, No, no, man. I like your flow, Mike. I, I don't like think I might have went too fast for the beat, but hey. No, 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 I liked it. It was perfect because of how I paced mine out. Even though we didn't hear each other's stuff, it was actually like, that's what I mean. It was a good compliment because it's like, I didn't want to hit the mic that way on that beat. I wanted to flex out on it a little bit. I was surprised on how you attacked it, and you killed it. No, 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 no. I had like, yeah, I had a different approach. I had a different like thought scheme. Because I told you, Mike, nobody's really caught wreck on that beat. So it's like, I want to catch wreck a little different. You know what I'm saying? I knew I was going to catch heat from the Eminem fans, man. They were like, man, you, you think you oh, better yeah, than Eminem, nigga? 
my, Obi, <laughs> there's a whole Eminem thing going on. Like, Obi really don't watch TV or podcasts or, like, delve in like that. So, like, Obi don't know, like, the whole Eminem thing that you got. But Mike has some Eminem issues. The Eminem fans hate <laughs> The Eminem fans hate me because I think he's overrated. I mean, you know, no disrespect. Yeah, I don't think uh, he's whack. Hey, Mike, right quick. 88, Sp- 88 Spence had just hit me on Instagram and said, that's Bubonic from Philly's Most Wanted that was responsible. Oh, uh, ah, Bubonic. Okay. There it is. Right, dude. I'm gonna, Jason Sweet with the super chat says. I ain't listen to that album in a minute. That album was solid. Their first mm-hmm. album was pretty dope. Yeah, they can split it. It was. I think they got overshadowed by a lot of the stuff that was going on in the game at the time. There's a lot of hits going no, on. No, like it was beans. No, like beans. It was beans. It was like when people heard beans because I was that way. I was like, who, who cares who else is coming out? Like you heard that guy. And you know what? It didn't help that the Neptunes gave pretty much. Please don't mind the Britney Spears for Slave either. That in <laughs> You think that's the same thing? <laughs> it pretty much is. <laughs> it is. I think about it. <laughs> it like, they, they've done that before. Like mm-hmm. I told you, like the all right beat. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the same. That's the same beat from the Rick guy Ross. Who gives, I know, yeah, Rick Ross you're right. Movie. You're right. Same track. Did they make that one, or was it just yes, the same? Yes, oh. It might just be Pharrell on that. I'm not uh, sure. That might just be Pharrell. I could that see that. That might be where it meets Chad. Right. Jason like, Sweet. In, in the repetitiveness of the sound. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Chad would always add those like interesting melodies. That's right. But, he does the you know he like, does the abstract and the ray. Right. I think Chad's like, more of bridge. I think Chad's more of the musician in the sense of playing instruments. Like, you know, Chad's yeah. a horn player. And where yeah. Pharrell's more of a percussion player. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jason Sweet with the super chat says, I just spoke to uh McFly. He'll be ready. He's a tourist too. His birthday was the first. Did I read that again or did they send that again? I think they sent that again. Appreciate the love on both Super Chats. CJ Kid with the Super Chat says, I was Scarface. Uh, Jarv was Manolo. It hurt me when I had to kill him and his whole squad for Dolo. <laughs> Shout out to the Rap Roundtable, man. I had a good time on this show on Monday. For the people who missed it, uh, I had to debate... Um, why I guess I said that Kanye West carried Jay Z in the 2000s. They took issue with that and they wanted to debate that. I tried to come to the table with uh, with as much factual information as possible, but the issue that they had with what I said was carried. And it sounds like well, not sounds like basically the issue that they had was 2001 through 2008, and they don't think that Kanye carried. Jay through those years, but they conceded to the fact that Kanye carried Jay from '09 to now. What say you? Because you're a big Kanye fan. Has his heat? I mean, creator carried him. I, I mean, I, I don't want to like repeat. Uh, you know, he's probably talked about this on Monday, but um, how do you how do you say that he carried him from 2008 you said, to now? Well, I said well, 2009 to now is because. You know, the Blueprint 3. Well, I said the 2000s originally, right? Every time uh-huh. Kanye was involved in a J project, it went like how we're expecting it to go. Every time Kanye wasn't involved with a J project, with the exception of American Gangster, but I'm going to get to American Gangster in a second, it was upsetting. You had 444, you got Kingdom Come. Now, Kanye did one song on there, but obviously he wasn't involved in that. And you have Holy Grail. That's what Jay Z. Didn't you really like American Gangster? I feel like there was one of them like you hit me up and you were like, "Yo, I like American Gangster." But see, the problem with American Gangster is also dope. I mean, Timbaland came through on that one. On which one? Holy Grail. Nah, man. And and I love the Timbaland and Jay combination, man. I I wasn't feeling that album. I think that's Jay's worst album. Second worst. (laughs) You like Picasso, baby? Worst album. I need a Picasso, in me casa. I'm a hasa. Nah, I was cool on that, man. Best record on there was Fuck With Me, You Know I Got It. And that's because yeah, of Ross. I was thinking about that. That's because of Ross. It's my favorite Ross's record. It is Ross's record. I actually, you know, it's funny, man. My, uh, my wife is a huge Jay-Z yeah. fan. And when I play Fuck With Me, You Know I Got It, I play the one with just Ross that's on his album. And she be waiting for Jay's verse to come in. Like, it ain't coming in on this one. 
<laughs> but but I say 2001 though, and I think that's where the whole argument came from. Kanye West is the blueprint of the blueprint, and when he said that on Drink Champs that Just Blaze was just copying after what he was doing, I mean Bink co-signed that. The other producer that was on there. Now their argument was Just Blaze got his sound from Bink. Or he was biting Bink. And I was like, well, Jay-Z said himself in his response to what Kanye said that the theme of the blueprint was soul samples. Now, who was doing the soul samples? It was Kanye on this Can't Be Life on the Dynasty. Because the Dynasty to me sounds like an album where an artist is searching for the next sound. It's all over the place. And yeah. it's Can't Be Life is the only real soul sample on there. That's ha- Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. And they wanted to point to 1900 Hustle, but that's a rock record. So, yeah. if we're talking about who. Hold on, is that, hold on, you said that's a rock record and then Rick Rock? No, no, no. That's, that's a rock. No, Bink did that, but I'm talking about the sample. It's not from like a soul. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. that's a rock sample. It's a boom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So if we're talking about the theme being soul samples, Kanye did that. And it's documented that the records that he gave Jay on there this uh on Never Change and uh um um uh uh shit, what's wrong with me? Heart of the City. Those went to somebody else. Like those songs have been around. Kanye's the blueprint of the blueprint. Who did the intro, Mike? The production. Who did the beat? Uh, Just Blaze did that. Would you consider that a soul sample? Oh, ask the producer. Oh, I feel like Just Blaze. So you're, I'm just trying to get this point. Like, so you see Just Blaze basically when he was doing those samples because he was doing a lot of those samples around that time too, right? He was. Is, he said he, he was his app. He was saying he didn't he was, start doing a Just Blaze was kind of searching for a sound because you remember he actually did three records on Buster Rhymes' Genesis, which was like 01 or no, it was 2000, I think. Yeah, that was 2000. And his shit sounded like Rockwell. So when Kanye says that, I'm like, well, that's believable because this nigga stuff sounded nothing like the Blueprint stuff until Kanye made the stuff he made. So that's kind of was the basis of my argument, like how important the blueprint is for Jay-Z and East Coast hip hop moving forward in the, you know, uh, 2000, 2001, 2003, whatever, 2002. And um, yeah, and Kanye set down, set the roadmap for that. He's the blueprint for the blueprint. Because without the blueprint, I don't know what Jay's stuff sounds like. It sounds like maybe the dynasty because it's all over the place. Black album. That's when it came out. His documentary? No, 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 no. I mean, the documentary, the album. Oh, uh, the documentary. That's around the time we met. Yeah, 05. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the documentary is 05. 05. I mean, I'm just thinking about uh, what's that um, No Church for Thugs? To me, that's just Blaze and Sam. You know, Church for the Wall? No, no, no. No, no. You're, you're talking that's about the game. I'm talking about No Church for Thugs on the yeah. documentary. Yeah. So all the, the niggas on the corner getting their hair braided, corn rolled by an L.A. bitch. And I can't forget the niggas up in New York City. I love New York, but gang banging, that's L.A. shit. Remember when he cut the beat down? Mm-hmm. When gang was talking about cutting the beat down and he raised the beat back up? Niggas want to heat me up. Talking that shit, that shit fire. They're going to lay me down. <laughs> and when I come through, it's to see what's up. Niggas really don't want no oh, parts of the power. You don't remember that shit? We used to ride to that shit. Yeah. Let me yeah, get to the Super Chats yeah, real yeah. quick. Uh, yeah. CJ Kid with the Super Chat says, I was playing that freestyle on repeat on my walk home from uh, work. Honest opinion, Mike has a better rap voice, but Coop has the better uh, debate slash podcast voice. They putting us against each other. <laughs> or man I mean, I would <laughs> go ahead. I think you have a better recordable voice than I do, though, Mike. Like you, you know that. I, I think that you know what I'm saying. Well, like, I, you I and, appreciate I mean, that, I man. Do, I hate I, hearing I, my I voice. I do a podcast but. with Andrew. Like both of y'all have like what I would consider to be better radio and podcast and vocal recording voices than me. I hate hearing my voice back, man. Like, you know, it, when it comes out, it sounds a certain way, but when you hear it back, it sounds totally different. And you're like, eh. it's cringy to hear your voice. Like, I don't even go back listening to the freestyles or records that I've done or anything. At least you. Yeah, he, he already knows me. I don't even like recording verses twice. Like, 
<laughs> Our man with the super chat says, peace, nice cypher. I hope y'all do another one. Uh, I want to make a request that Mike rhymes over an Eminem beat. I'm with it. <laughs> now, I would have Eminem's first. First see, of all. See? Eminem's <laughs> got beats. Huh? <laughs> oh, oh. I, I got a good question for the people out there. What is Eminem's best beat? Because a lot of his beats are kind of trash. But I will give him that one beat that was on uh, The Massacre. That I'm gonna die tonight. That was dope. I don't like Renegade, even though MGK did his thing on it recently. Not you a big fan of Moment of Clarity. I, I mean, really, guys, what Eminem beat would y'all say? Yo, man, I got a rhyme on that shit. I don't know. Would you be cool rhyming over the Renegade beat, boy? Yeah, it's kind of play. I, mean, I, like I, I only say that because that's also one of Eminem's best bar performances. Yeah. Oh, no, he killed it. His bar work on there is stellar. No, he killed it. He killed so it. Like, so you got to look at it. See, I always look at it like it's like two ways to approach like sizing up a beat. It's like, you know, you can size up to the, like, the level of the competitor and you can size up to the level of the beat. Like the respiration thing was about sizing up to both because it's like nobody really rocked with it. But, like nobody's really rhymed over the renegade beat either. But there's a reason for that shit. <laughs> you know what? I, I I think off the top of my head, and I don't know if I don't think M made this. I think Dre made it. Role model would be one. I would rhyme. Yeah, I think that's Dre. Yeah, and cancerous. If you wish, you wouldn't want to answer. Don't push me on answer. get rich or die trying. That's... Didn't M do that? What about don't push me? I like don't push me. Yeah, yeah, I like don't push me. I don't like the uh, what's the other record they did together? Patiently waiting. I didn't really yeah, like patiently waiting. Like patiently waiting. No. But don't push me. And I think Eminem did his thing on there, verse wise too. Oh no, he got that. That's one of his better. I yeah. like his flow on there. His yeah. flow on there is sick. Yeah. L Bugs with the super chat says, "Shout out to you, Mike." Oh, you seen the number? I saw the number. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, listen, hold Man. on. It's 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 low, bro. It's low. You said thirty six is too low for him. Thirty six is too low. You've okay. seen the list because I have the list sitting up here right okay. now. Okay, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. L Boogs in the Super uh, Chat okay, says... So how about this? Who, who is ahead of him immediately that he should be ahead of? Dude, are you telling me... You said Kim as in Lil' Kim? Yeah, Lil' Kim. Come on. Come on now. We, Overall? We, we have to, like, we have to show... <laughs> That's crazy. Hold on, Mike. That's Mike. crazy. Mike, Mike. 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 He's Hold looking on. at one dimension of this. No, no, no! I'm gonna tell you who Obi is. This is the guy. <laughs> this is the guy. That, this is the guy. The last time Andre did a dope verse, he sent me a message and was like, "This guy might be the best guy ever." I'm like, Obi, he doesn't have an album. Obi takes me back. <laughs> Obi takes me back to my a rhyme is a rhyme. <laughs> he doesn't have a song. Are we talking about just ability, just lyrical ability? Oh, what, are, what are we talking about? Okay, so we have categories. So check yeah. it out. I forgot. You gotta, you gotta show them the categories. Let me get to the super chat real quick. L Bugs with the super chat says, "Shout out to you, Mike, uh, for showing us how to move in a room full of vultures." <laughs> I'm glad y'all enjoyed the rap roundtable uh, appearance. They say they're gonna come on here next. We just gotta find the topic. Um, CJ Kid with the super chat says, "Coop, uh, need your opinion." Uh, oh. <laughs> RRT said. <laughs> It said, Rap Roundtable said the Hit Boy is carrying Nas. Mike, do you remember this? It's very problematic that they say that. I, look, I gave well, my the opinion. Who's ever carried Nas? <laughs> you know, I tried to, I tried to be as, <laughs> I tried to be as unbiased as I normally am. It's so funny because we've been having conversations about some of this stuff for like twenty years now, so it's like. I mean, Hit Boy, watch. look, Hit Boy reinvigorated Nas, right? And I think that. From what they were saying, and maybe they were just trying to go tit for tat because I said Kanye carries Jay in the 2000s. What Hit Boy has done, he's reinvigorated Nas, and I mean, Nas has admitted that, but I wouldn't say carrying because Hit Boy's throwing him all kind of production, he's catching it. It seems very even in that sense, you know? No, 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 I'm, okay, so I think here's what they were trying to say, and maybe, I think maybe they might have said what they were trying to say slightly wrong. Or incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And here's what I mean. What they're saying is, is is that Hit Boy's youth, much like Kanye's youth to Jay, 
was a much needed shot in the arm in terms of the perspective in the landscape. Now the execution is going down differently. Exactly. But but what's being offered is, is like, no, the same way um, Jay found something with Kanye is the same way Nas has found something with Hit. It's somebody who is about, you know, 8 to 10 to 12 years younger. You know what I'm saying? I think where and, the Carry comment came from, for me, was the fact that, boom, American Gangster, dope album, right? But we know Jay for the hits. And... He didn't have any hits on American Gangsta. As much as I love the Rock Boys, it's not a hit record for Jay Z standards. Now, when it came to having to get a hit again, he had to make Kanye executive producer of the Blueprint Three. Boom, that happens. Then Kanye, directly after that, makes My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, and this is where the carry part comes in at for me. He said, "You know what? Let's make an album together." No, you hot right now. You know what I'm saying? So. That's where it feels like carried in that way. And that's probably where I can't, where I deduced that from. And not to mention on Watch the Throne, Kanye's out rapping Jay on that album. So, and obviously he's overseeing the production. So that's where the carried comment came from. Okay. And then, and then after that, he drops two duds. <laughs> it's what it is. We need, he needs Kanye back in the building. Pusha needs Kanye back too. I was listening to Daytona today, man. He needs him back, man. Um, <laughs> Mad Max with the super chat says, um, Dini said, uh, Dini said that if you're going to say yay, carry ho, then hit boy saved and carry Nas. Y'all trying to lie to Coop so that he can uh, violate <laughs> y'all not slick. No, we said that. I think he was piggybacking off of what CJ said. Let me see what else we got here. We got oh, Riddle. It's from Fontana. He was like right next door to us while we were recording. Oh, shit. Great. Riggit 49 with the Super Chat says, uh, do y'all think Inspected X verse on Triumph is a top 10 all-time verse? By the way, Pac is the GOAT, but I was happy uh, that y'all gave Cube his respect. Um, we did a top 10 versus list when we first started the podcast. We may need to do that again because I'm sure some factors changed. And Inspector's verse from Triumph is in there. Now, you said on this show that that's the second best verse on the album, right? Arguably, but I think on, I think it did make our top 10. I think it came in at six, if memory serves. I think it was something like that, yeah. I think the yeah. degree of difficulty, uh, based on everything that, I mean, everybody that's on there, that makes that verse very highly regarded, as it should oh, be. Oh, but I oh, think the impossible got, verse might be better. I got a question for Ovi, if a rhyme is just a rhyme, and this is for you too, what's Andre's best verse, and is that a top 10 verse? Mm. I know all of Andre's verses like the back of my hand. We're not so counting. So do I. We're not counting that uh, that one long song. We're not counting the day in the life of Andre Benjamin. I would imagine. He's gonna tell you that it counts. Does it? <laughs> I mean, I think any song counts. <laughs> See, I mean, you're talking about, rhyme, you know, right? I guess I saw your list. Right? You're talking about all the different categories. Oh, I guess I'm thinking about pure artistry, like just pure ability, like. Mm-hmm. You love listening to them, the, the wordplay, like that, like just like everything about the way they put together a song is on this level, and this person's here, this person's there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, like I said, you're talking about albums, you're talking about longevity. Everything, everything. What, what do you think is his best verse, Obi? I, I'm interested to hear your perspective on it. Oh man, uh, or throw a few out there. I really like elevators. Mm-hmm. Last verse. Yeah. I think that would be... I listened to Elevators yesterday. It's a special record. I, I feel like... I think that would be the verse that would probably give him the best chance to be in a, a, a list like this. It's not top 10. No, it's not. I have my personal favorite. Steve verse on... Okay, go ahead. I was going to say, I have my personal favorite Andre verses, but yeah, I agree with Obi. I think like that if we're talking about... Get, up, get out would rank higher than that. You think so? 
I think I so. don't recall ever graduating at all. That's no, that's a dumb Sometimes I feel like I'm just a disappointment to y'all. Yeah. Every day I just walk around and I can, he's tapping into something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he <laughs> is, but what Andre has is that delivery, man. Uh, got delivery. stopped at the mall the other day. Heard a call from like he gets those style points in that sense, and he's always gonna hit you with the lyrics. I, I know at least for here, right? And I say here, meaning Atlanta. The one that changed the trajectory for Dre was the thought process first. Um, I know that's probably not going to be listed as an all-time great verse, but that's the one to me. Uh, but I could see the Elevators being the one. But if Elevators is his best verse, he's going to have a lot of people ahead of him. I'll put it that way. I mean, CeeLo's Decision Decisions verse, I don't know if Dre has a better verse than that. I don't lyrically maybe not, but you do, but style does matter. And style Big does matter. Yeah. You know, humble mumble is a pretty great verse too. Huh? Humble humble mumble on Stankoni is a pretty great verse. That's uh, the one I met a critic. I made a shit of draw. She said yeah. she had Papa's only guns and alcohol. I said, oh hell no, but yet is that too. You can't discriminate because you done read a book or two. That one. Yeah. Oh yeah. What if I yeah. look at you no, in the microscope? Mike. Yeah. Mike, that's one of his best verses. Yeah, that's an easy top five verse for him in my opinion. Yeah. What if I he look at you in the microscope? That's, like, that's the best verse on that album actually. <laughs> Saw so all your dirty yeah, organisms album, like. living in the closet. Would I stop it? Would I pause it? And put that thing in slow motion, got the potion, and the an antidote, and a quote for collision, the decision. Is do you want to live or want to exist? The game changes every day, so obsolete of the fist and marches. Speeches only reaches those who already know about it. This is how we know about it. It's a pretty great verse. Uh, his performance on Akumana, the album, is just, to me, it's one of the best rap performances <laughs> A group members ever given on a hip hop album. Uh, yeah, man, it's hard to. I mean, his quality is so high. He's so consistently up there. It's hard to pick that one that just stands out from the rest. But I think Elevators is a good one to pick. So I'll tell you this, and then we're probably gonna let Obi go so he can get some rest. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Other people while he's here. <clears throat> Our thing with Andre, and I've said this because, you know, you and I have been having the Andre conversation for a long time. You know how I feel about Dre. Uh -huh. is, is that, look at this list of guys. I didn't see him in the yeah. Because he's not on the list. Look. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> <someone another. laughs> There's a buy-in. <laughs> wow. Hold on. Hold on. Show me. Listen. Uh -huh. Where is his The World Is Yours? Or Dead Presidents? Or, um... Microphone theme, follow the leader, the one more chance, the yeah. shiznit, what's my name? He doesn't have Jenny any Jim. three song verses. Like, it's not fair to these other guys that have made so many three song classic and two song classic songs and verses by themselves that he gets to have it. He needs at least a classic solo album to get in. Because we give people yeah. Method Man and his hell, and at least they've made albums. Yeah. A bunch. At least, at least Lauren Hill, at least Lauren Hill has proven that we can yeah. listen to her Oracle for three verses too. on uh, Lost One. Yeah, you gotta have a solo rap album to be one of the best solo rap artists of all time, don't you think? Or to be the best, how about this? Look about this. If you're the greatest rapper of all time, uh -huh. how can we say that when you haven't even made incarcerated Scarfaces <laughs> or Quiet Storm? Yeah. We don't know if you even deserve to be in that conversation. Like Ray and Prodigy aren't in a greatest of all time conversation. Yeah, we don't even know if you can do that. Gary Pierce with the super chat says, uh, "Love your show, Kings. Cipher was dope. How um, how about from now on, all rap guests go into the cipher with you two? I, I'm with that. We can do that. Appreciate the love." <laughs> <laughs> right, raising Yoda with the super chat says, Mike. I thought that your debate at Rap Roundtable was great. Ultimately, people are going to have their own opinions anyway. I, I, you know, I tried to have a civil conversation with my guys, man. They show love, man. I know they were offended by some of the things I said before I got on there. So I was like, I'm going to let them talk, and then I'm going to defend my opinion and points. CJ Kid with the Super Chat says, if anything, I hate my voice as well, guys. I think everybody feels like that. I've heard Q-Tip yeah. say stuff like that, too. You can hang out at school, so I'm going to All right, we're going to let you roll, man. I'm sorry. We don't want to hold you up or whatnot. <laughs> but appreciate yeah. you coming through. You know, he, nice he, to meet he flew you. in from out the country for some uh, unfortunate news and circumstances. So oh, we no. need to get rid of touch base with some people. 
Yeah, All right. you know, I appreciate you having me on here. It was good talking to you about music. Yes, sir. It. We got to do this again. Yeah, for sure. All, All right. right. I'll let you know. Jadarion with a super chat says, uh, what about the BM did for Nas, the cross? We just talked about the cross. What do you think about the cross as a beat, Poop? I mean, I mean, okay, so. <laughs> you just took the cross off the, uh, you crossed the cross out of uh, uh, God's son. Because, Mike, the three <laughs> best songs on God's Son are right around the cross. And yeah. so it's like, I don't even know really properly what to make of the beat because it's, after Get Down and Before Made You Look and Last Real Nigga Alive is right after that. Those are literally the three best songs on there. So it's like maybe I would take to the song differently if it was further back. Mm -hmm. But no. Is Stan the best beat on the Marshall Mathers LP? Or is it The Way I Am? I mean, on some rap shit, I think it's The Way I Am because you okay. can rap to it more on some rap shit, Mike. Like yeah. you be saying, it's like, oh, you don't have any rap beats. That's the one, if he does. AB Studio with the Super Chat says, uh, Ye was consistent with his soul sampling uh, use from Jay-Z. This can't be life. Beanie Siegel, nothing like it. Yeah, I didn't even go to Siegel. And Gangsta Gangsta, those records turned to the blueprint. Agreed. And it's interesting that that album's called The Blueprint. Ye is the blueprint of the blueprint. But I will give Jay the... Um, that 03 he really held it down with the black album even though there was a whole lot of great all-time great help on there um cj kid with the super chat says uh ea ski shout out uh shout it out to you guys on a freestyle too that's what's up ea ski ea ski shout it out to you guys on the freestyle too well that's what's up really what's i up? love ea ski's beef <laughs> <laughs> Take note of that. Put us on the beat. Uh, Rigger Forty Nine with the super chat says uh, three stacks got too many verses just to name one. That's not fair. We don't do that when we, Mike. <laughs> we don't be doing that with nobody else. We don't do that with anybody else. Rigger Forty Nine says. If, have we ever pulled up in here, Mike? If we ever pulled up in here and be like, man, Rockem got too many verses. He does. But no, we. Nas got too many verses. We Jay know. got too many verses. We'd be like, no, give me that verbal intercourse. Um, give me that second verse of lyrics of Fury. Give me that third verse from Dead Presidents. No, we be knowing what we doing. Like, why are we acting this You way? know, it's interesting, man. I don't think there's anybody in hip-hop people make special cases for like Drake. I'm trying to think. I'm telling you what, Mike, for anybody, I'm this is why I keep saying this, Mike, if you've met him. Like, like easily the most affable and approachable mm -hmm. person or his talent level that I've ever seen. And probably one of the not just gen genuinely nicest people that you ever have and find. Yeah, you know, nothing to do with what we talk about, Mike. No, I you know I think Dre's thing no, is man. Dre doesn't want to be what we hold him as. He doesn't want to cool. be a great all time rapper. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And and he doesn't want to be held to that. And and and, and the um the solo work or lack thereof reflects that. Mm -hmm. And so does him not being on this list, Mike. Because yeah. How about this? <clears throat> you want to know what? Watch this. You want to know what I think we should do because it's time to get in the ratings anyway. Okay. Well, let me get through these super chats and we'll get right to these ratings. But yeah, that's a really good point. Andre's verse on Jazzy Bell is goaded. I love Andre's verse on at Jazzy Bell. I specifically love his half verse at the end where he takes on Cujo Goody's style. That me and Ogo end up black on black, Latin no star. I thought that was very dope. Me too. I thought that was dope. <laughs> How about this, Mike? Let's just let's just have fun right quick. Mm -hmm. Let's put Big Boy and Andre up against each other. Let's do right it. Quick. Let's do it. For the first time ever, anybody putting Dre and Big Boy against each other. Let's do it. I'm with it. Mike, impact. That's Andre. I'll give you that. I guess. But you know what? Big Boy brought throwbacks to the game, but I'll still give it to Dre because a lot of these guys kind of look like Dre running around here now. Dre looked like Prince, but that's a whole other thing. Live performance. <laughs> I'm a Prince fan. I'm just telling you. I call it like uh, I see it. It's true. Um, <laughs> and he is too. Um, the performance, you know what? I'm going to give it to the guy that doesn't have stage fright. Go Big Boy. I'm going to give it to the guy that performs, Mike. <laughs> no, Dre said he has stage fright. 
Dre said I'm, he has I, stage I, fright. So. I, stage fright or no stage fright, one guy like has a performance record right now that the other guy doesn't. Yeah. Lyrics. That's Dre. Yep. Storytelling. That's Dre. Yep. Classic albums. Guess what? That's a time. <laughs> Is that a tie? Because Big Boy actually has albums. But are they classic? They're not. I think they're all dope. We could tie. I think they're dope. But I don't think they're classic. To be fair. Okay. Like, uh, uh, Son of Chico Dusty? Dope. Boomiverse? Dope. What's the other one? Um... Um, Sir Lucius Leftwood. Yeah, Sir Lucius. That's the best one. Sir Lucius Leftwood is probably the best one that's hold up the best. Mm -hmm. And it's really dope, but it's not a classic. Mike, classic songs. Well, that would be. That's Big Boy. The guy that has songs. That's Big, that's big Boy. Because he's actually been making songs since then and become classics. I'll give you an example, Mike. Rap songs. Yeah. Let's be specific. Because people will be like, yo, Mike, he got no, hey, no, y'all, son. Mike, let's call according to hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> kill Jill would kill, kill Jill with Killer Mike and Jeezy. You the way you me? move. The way you move. Yeah. I was going to give people pet something past the love below on speaker box just so you can understand. West like, Savannah. No. If we want to be like that, West Savannah. Dre don't like even longevity. have a West Savannah. Longevity of albums. That's big boy. Unless you want to tie that. But I think that's... We can big. tie it because they started together. No, no, yeah. no. We can tie it because they started together. The, the, the best stuff that they did, they did together. And that's the stuff that's holding up about both of their careers. Longevity of songs. That's a tie. You know, I'm going to surprise people with this feature thing. Classic collaborations. I think that's big boy, honestly. I think that's a tie. Because I think big boy has more and he's quality, is more consistent. But I big boy is on, I mean, no. big boy did the drain on like 85, Young Bloods, classic. Uh, Love in Your Mouth with Kilo. That's a local classic if people don't even want to consider that. You got Street Talking with uh, with Slick Rick. You got All of My Grill with Missy. You got Dro well, in the Wind. Right. Mike, 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 you're right. Because all the other stuff that Dre on, Big Boy on too. There. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Career longevity quality. Well, that's Big Boy. Yep. So. And the voice goes to Dre, in my opinion. Yeah. So. Guess what, Mike? They're tied. <laughs> well, there we go. As a duo should be, right? There it is. And so how, how do we think that he deserves to be? You get what I'm saying? When yeah. you put him next to Big Boy, he can't, you know what I mean? He can't beat it. And the tiebreaker would be. They, you know. He can't beat the guy that people says that everybody that he's better than, who literally was rhyming right there next to him the whole time. And Mike, to be honest with you, I would argue with you and tell you that he's a better storyteller than Big Boy because we don't have enough evidence of that. Dre's a pretty dope storyteller, but maybe I just gave that to him off of a few stories. Right, that's uh, what I'm saying. When you're talking about the stories, talking about the stories in our own from 1998 when we was in high school, Mike? Yeah, I'm talking about artist storytelling. One, right. Two's not really a story. I think his verse on Rosa Parks is a story. Um, it is. I'm like, you're talking about 1998. Yeah. But see, Big Boy got songs like Do you hear the, story? Do you hear the stories that Big Boy's talking about on Speaker Box? Yeah, you're right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He got unhappy. Yeah. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, Mike, are you still ducking that feature battle? I look forward to hearing upgrades. Oh, no, that's you. Friday. And uh, <laughs> in between us, back to back. Nah, I got my jigger shit ready. It's on. That's Friday. What time are we doing that? I mean, we should do it like the time we normally do the show, right? I figured we would, um, we don't know if, is music coming? Mm, I don't think any music's coming. I don't know of any right now. Rigger 49 over the Super Chat says, just because three stacks don't have a solo don't mean that he's not top three in my book. I think Southern Playlistic is my favorite cast album. What about y'all? Well, Akumana is my favorite. Him. But again, I don't understand Rigor 49. I like, you do understand that all right, a solo artist is writing three verses for a song. And so Andre, he averages around, what, 12 to 14 verses per album? A solo artist is doing that four songs in. Like, so how does that not matter? Sorry about that. How does that not matter? That does matter. 
I'll tell you this. How about this? Let's get to this list and get this top 50 rounded out. Because here's what I wanted to do with this top 50. Mm-hmm. For anybody who has left out the top 50, I want to give them ample time to climb the full ladder. Let's do it. And, and that includes Andre and Lauren. So it's like we're not including them in it because they don't have any solo material. But after the 50 is done, if they can really climb in here and make their headway with no solo rap material whatsoever, well, then let's see. Yeah, without you know us saying? grading them on a scale. You know what I'm saying? Right, without us rating them on a scale, let's just li- literally, like, like, let's just, like, really see, because it's like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, well, they're not going to go with so far. Uh, CJ Kidd says, uh, Coop, check the comments on the video. He shouted you guys out. So congrats. Okay. Well, we appreciate all the love that we get from that, man. I was seeing a whole bunch of comments oh, from people I ain't never seen. He, sh- <laughs> he shouted out us on our video, is what you're saying? Uh-huh. Jay Short with the Super Chat says... Can we get a beat? <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, Jay Short says, uh, not hate on Dre, but nobody was talking like this back in the 90s. Outkast was a group. Nobody singled him out into Eminem's Till I Collapse. Now, Jay Short, thank you for saying that because, you know, we're here in Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia in the 90s, and Outkast was viewed as a unit. There were people that liked Big Boy. There were people that liked Dre. But the hip-hop world at large, and that's what makes it so weird, Andre being singled out, when they were making their prime material, damn near all of their material, nobody was singling Dre out like this. Ever. Even after they made Akumana. Akumana went out there and did f- had five mics. This nigga wrapped his ass off on that album, but he was never in any discussions, even after that. Just with I us. Do remember, I do remember Double XL doing an article on him saying, uh, talking. it was an inspiration question even then, talking about, you know, Arguably, the most gifted MC in the game doesn't, mm. you know, want to do rap material. So it's like Double XL at their peak contributed. Leroy Green with the that. super chat says, uh, "Peace to you for going on the rap roundtable, but you never tried to uh, buy a beat from Ye before, Jay and <laughs> before. I'm sorry, but you never, but you never tried to buy buy and uh, beats from Ye before Jay." And that's because it's really Jay that made Yay matter. Nah, you know what, listen. We all know Jay-Z made Kanye West the big name that he is. I didn't know who Kanye West was until I heard Izzo. But that still doesn't mean he's not the creative force behind Jay-Z's most important album in the 2000s. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he was the bigger artist. And when he got his shot, he took over. <laughs> like, it is what it is. And he made the takeover. No pun intended. Brian with the Super Chat says, M has poor credit on, um, producer credit, excuse me. M has producer credit on Many Men and High all the time. Do you really believe Eminem produced Many Men and High all the time? Might do some drums or some snares. Well, if that's the case, I'm rapping over that stuff. Shit. (laughs) I rap over High all the time, then. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, I just feel strongly about this. Fans debate, uh, fans debate is one thing, but the industry and the media trying to cancel Big Boy out of his own group is wrong on so many levels. And I'm starting to see this. It's intentional. It does feel yes. like it's coming from the top, to be honest. Yes. Um, ready to get on this list? I think we got just a couple of more Super Chats. Uh, Gary Pierce with the Super Chat says, uh, to put Andre in top 10 with no solo albums or songs is to say... Dre is by far the greatest, which would be asinine to say. You can't say that if you haven't proven to be in all of these elements. It's kind of like when they say, yo, there's a nigga on the block better than Michael Jordan. Well, he hadn't been in all of Michael Jordan's situations, so I can't say that. You know what I'm saying? And there's so many situations that Dre is void from that most solo artists have to go through that he it's not even applicable. You can't even make an argument. Those are all fair assertions. All right, let's get to the list. I got through all the super chats. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> thumbs up in the chat, y'all. We're gonna finish this list today. I promise. Yeah. Click like and subscribe. Yes. Hey. All that. All okay. That. So um, here's who we have to choose from. Now, Mike, I have some people highlighted that you said you wanted to go through. Bun B, Cameron, MC Light, Nicki Minaj, Ludacris. Where do you want to start? I want to start with Cam. All of these are very interesting, by the way. All right, let's start with Cam. Kill him. We start in Cam. We start in Cam at 42, where Freddie is. Yeah. 
Impact. That's Cam. Cam. Killer. Live performance. Uh. Might be Gibbs. I don't know. I don't know about Gibbs' performance. I know Cam stepped up at that versus. Uh, You're right. You want to know what? Yeah, that was heat, too, because they were getting. They were how getting, about this? Yeah. Mike, the only reason that wasn't a 50-point blowout is because of Cam. Cam made it a 25-point game. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Cam made a 50-point game a 25-point game. No, nah, really. I give that to Cam. Lyrics. Uh, I'm going Cam. Me, personally. I'm going I'm going Gibbs. Okay. You got to throw it in the chat. Let the people decide. We can do that. Hold on. Let me let me get the other computer out a second. Cam got a lot of strong suits. Yeah, I want I want to I want to see what people are gonna say there. I mean, I think he's gonna beat Freddie, but I still want to see what people gotta say. Storytelling. Huh. I don't know any Cam stories to be honest with you. Off the top of my head. And when Freddie tells stories, he tells stories about situations or things that happen to him, but they're pretty deep and stark when he does. Okay, we'll give it to Freddie. Classic albums. Cam. Oh, Freddie got some joints. Are you sure? Yeah, that might name be me, name me, name me, name me. How about this? <clears throat> and ask yourself this, Mike. What does Cam have that's better than Alfredo? I think Cam's best album to me is Purple Haze. That's not better than Alfredo, Mike. I'm, I'm with sorry. You. But then Cam has come home with me. Gibbs got bandana. Mm-hmm. And then Cam has... Um, I think I would probably go conf- Confessions of Fire next. No, 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 no. SDE is next. Can't, but Gibbs got, uh, what's the other one? The, the Pinata. He's yeah. got Pinata, Bandana, Alfredo. You know, that's one of Soul Soul separately might be the separating point, Mike. I think he's it got is. four. That's yeah. what I mean. Okay. Yeah, Soul Soul separately is tough. The classic songs is Cam. That's Cam. Longevity of albums, that's Cam. Mm hmm. Longevity of songs, that's Cam. Classic collaborations, that's Cam. Mm-hmm. Even though Gibbs has done a lot of work, that's still Cam. Career longevity, Cam winning this. Okay. Yeah. It don't even matter about the live performance thing. Cam was going to win. But see, I'm seeing, and we'll do a poll for another one. I'm seeing where Cam comes up short. The storytelling. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, I, 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 how about this? I get down with Cam's whole movement. And, and I love Cam on record, and he's like a really personal guy and flashy guy, but it's like mm-hmm. up against like top-notch competition, I feel like he, he might struggle. Like Lupe's next impact, that's Cam. Mm-hmm. Live performance, Cam. Okay. I, I don't know. Lyrics, what to, yeah. Lyrics is lyrics Lupe. Story, lyrics and storytelling is Lupe, and it's not even a conversation. It's not even a conversation. Classic albums. Hmm. I want to ask the people that. I want to surprise you, Mike, and I'm going to tell you it's Lupe. Because of the cool? The cool is just so much better than anything Cam's ever made. I, okay, Sorry. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because I, I'm right there, too. And then you got food and liquor. And then you got, you know, yeah, he has records, yeah. Because I think food and liquor and Purple Haze are about the same. I don't know if he's going to get past Lupe. Correct. Classic songs, that's Cam. Yeah. Longevity of albums is Cam. Yeah. Longevity of songs is Cam. Yeah. Classic collaborations. I think that's Cam, too. Cam's moving on. I think Lupe would have won the rest, though. For the Lupe fans out there before y'all curse us out. Longevity, quality, and voice. See, you kind of see where Lupe comes short of some things, too, though. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a reason that some of these people are placed where they are, like, truly. But like I said, once we get the list done... We're going to start pulling everybody else back out again. Like, we pulled Meth and Black Thought out. They ended up at 27, 28. They was at 11 and 12. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) It's crazy how this works. But I think that we were getting used to the process, and now we're kind of used to the rubric. Right. Well, well, Prodigy was at 20. Now he's at 33. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, we're being honest and unbiased about it as we can be. We'll pull him back out once we're done with all this again and do it again. He might be higher. He might might be. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so game impact Cam or game? The Cam, Cam go? Yeah, Cam moved on. Uh, impact is Cam. Live performance. Mm. Cam, I think. Yeah. Lyrics is game to me, and so is storytelling. 
I don't know, so man. Album. Cam is such a dope lyricist. He's very abstract and very ghost faces. With it's like it's like watching it's like listening to Picasso paint though, Mike. It's like I I don't understand what that is on the wall. Those are diamonds and rubrics and cubes and a big <laughs> eye right there with the slash and 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 some and some pink Louis Vuitton slippers to come with it with a matching pink ring. I don't know what that is, Mike. I don't bam, know. Bam bam them, cam a blam blam them. Like people laugh at that stuff, but that shit is dope. The way that he's doing, you know, what I'm saying like, where is this coming from? <laughs> Mama, I love I the perspective, it. Mike, but I don't know if he's better than game. Uh, you want to know it? Killer and Coppa, we chill in Morocco. For real, we got the chichillas, though we fill yeah. with them hollows. Like, who did you think was better when they did the back and forth on this song recently that was on Drillmatic? That's fair. Yeah. You want to know it? I'm going to give you that one. Okay, that's fine. Storytelling in classic albums is game. Yeah, that's game. Classic songs? That's Cam, man. Are you sure that's Cam? I'm, I'm not sure. Right. Think Cam got it. a lot of stuff, though. Like, Let's just say this. If Game gets this, Cam's going to get the longevity of songs. Right, but I think Game has actually made bigger records for the time that he was at his peak, is what I'm saying. Those records are big, and there's not a documentary... And, dreams, uh, um, dreams the is fifty beast. records. Yeah, put you on the game. Yeah, okay. Um, wouldn't get far with Yay. One Blood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know what I mean, okay. So Game got more classic songs than Cam. He does actually. Okay. People All stick right. on Game catalog. Longevity of albums is Cam. Longevity of songs is Cam. Yep. Classic collaborations, Cam. Yep. Game don't collaborate like that. Cam's moving up. See, now here's the thing. You may not love Cam, but Cam's like, you know, he, he's dope. Yeah. He deserves to be on. Yeah. Oh, I think people Styles, love Cam. Ooh, I like this. Styles is at 39. Okay, Styles Impact. being Cam. I think Impact. Cam's going to beat Styles. Impact. Cam? Cam. Killer. Live performance. Styles. Interesting. They were both I ain't the picking same. no dip set member over no... Locks, Locks never after, after what happened. And, and you know what? Live. We picked the dip set too in our pre show. It's the worst prediction you and I have made since <laughs> we've done this show. It we literally got on Star Show and said it was the like same thing. like watching a slasher flick, Mike. Yeah. We got on Star Show. He had us on as a guest and we predicted dip set would win. I actually think Star was telling us we were bugging. If I Star can remember correctly. Invited- I haven't talked to Star since I made that prediction. Mike, he's just like, no, 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 we got to cut this nigga water off right here. He don't know shit about hip-hop. We done with him. <laughs> Mike, you can come back on. The other nigga we're talking to, he's done. Um, <laughs> lyrics. That's style. L- lyrics is styles, I will say so that. So it's storytelling. Storytelling styles. Classic albums. I give that to Cam. I That's think Cam's Cam. album are better than Styles albums. Yeah. I know people laud Styles albums so much. A lot, and they're good, but a lot of them are made in the same vein, and it's hard to separate the the good from the great, from the average, from the, yeah. I think people, uh, when they do that, they're comparing Styles albums to Jada's albums. That's not fair to either one of them. Yeah. Classic songs. That's classic that's songs. Cam. It's Cam. Longevity of albums. Cam. Mm-hmm. Longevity of songs might be Styles though, because he's been on stuff like. All about. He's been on like BMF. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I don't, don't know, know, man. I still Ooh. think that's good. Yeah, on band from TV, Mike. I don't know, Mike. Cause yeah. I, actually, because I'm thinking about it. Longevity of albums. When did Locks album come out? When did Cam first album come out? Locks came out in 90. Uh, that was 97. Oh, the Cam. Yeah. That's a tie. Because they're both on band from TV, too. Yeah. Yeah. Longevity of songs is. Cam because That's he probably Cam. has more classic solo songs. Yeah, that horse and carriage. Like, what means the world to you, oh boy? Stuff yeah, like that. Horse and carriage, horse and carriage remix, all that. Classic collaborations of Styles. I'm with that. Styles is on some heavy ass records. All about the Benjamins. Niggas done started some. I mean, um, he's on everything. Twenty four hours to live. Twenty four hours to live. The Rick Ross, the Jay Z record on volume styles. two. 
Yeah. Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, yeah. Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, yeah, he's everywhere. Career longevity quality. I'll tell you that Styles, because Styles took around. I'm with that. Appreciate that. Voice. Ha! Give me Killer Cam with the voice. Is it come down to the voice? It has, because Cam has four, Styles have five, and we have a tie. But I don't think Cam has a better rap voice than Styles. Let's see what the people say. I'm going to put that one in as a poll. Because Cam needs to win this to just for it to be a tie for him to pause and stay right here. So Cam's not probably going any higher than right here at Styles. Let's see. But he can hope there's a tie. I want to see what the people have to say. Let's see. Cam Ron. And then we got to do our tiebreaker. Tiebreaker is probably going to go to uh, Cam. Best album. Correct, because it's best, it's best album, right? Mm -hmm. That would be Cam, but still. Who, we need to see what they say about the voice, though. Well, let me go to the Super Chats while we uh, get to that. Uh, while we're getting the votes clocked in, I mean... Uh, so yeah, I got it in here. Well, how many votes you wanted to get up to? Maybe 50? First 50? We already got 30 votes. I'll get through no, the Super no. Chat to see where we're at. Rigor 49 with the Super Chat says, uh, I do want to say I love Big Boy. Outcast is my favorite group. All right, we're good, good. Glad you said that. Mad Max of the Super Chat says, uh, the industry does that because Dre was wearing skirts. LOL. <laughs> $20 super chat from CJ Kidd in the building. Showing love. He says, I hate the fact that uh, that because Jay is bit is the bigger artist, that if he does, if he does, then he does it first. Or is it responsible for bringing stuff into hip hop? Or is it responsible for bringing stuff into hip hop? The blueprint Mine. brought the soul back, uh, but Warriors and Supreme Clientele had them a year before. Well, that's the thing we deal with with Jay, man. Jay brings things to the masses. Niggas was wearing throwback jerseys, but when Jay did it, everybody started doing it. Mike, it's getting tight. It's Styles 5149 with 43 votes in. Oh. We got to pick a number. We got to pick a number. We're going to stop at 70 votes? What number you want? 50. 50? No, stopping at 50. It's 5149. So okay. We got 40. Right. Five votes. more votes to cast. Yeah. Five Somebody. more votes to cast. Let's see. Let me. Anybody, uh, let us know. By the time I get to this other super chat, oh, it's Uncle Fram. He's gonna curse me out. It says Mike, thanks for oh, acknowledging no that uh, Jay took Kanye out of obscurity. After that, we all know Kanye is the biggest genius in hip hop. Okay. Fair. Uh, Mike, it's not looking good for Cam. We just need one, one more, more vote. vote. Cam, Cam, Cam needs that vote for it to be a tie. It's fifty-one percent. Oh, up. That vote lost. went Styles P's way. Okay. Cam stops there. And that was pretty exciting, y'all. Well, now it's yeah, getting yeah, out of whack. Good. Yeah, that was close. Y'all really think Styles got a better rap voice than Cam? I do, Mike. Styles has a great rap voice, Mike. You okay. don't like Styles' rap voice? I do, but I like Cam's rap voice. I do. Not as much as I like Styles' rap voice. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, I like Cam, but nobody gets more East Coast extra credit than him. E-40 in the game. <laughs> I like that. East Coast extra like credit that. from our West Coast. We're going to use that, Jay Short. He's at East E-40 East in extra. the game have had better careers, but Cam is from Harlem, so he gets a boost. You know, that uh, East Coast um, extra credit, if it went to somebody like Common, he might be top 10. Who knows? Common's not top 10. Okay. If he was from Brooklyn, he might be. <sighs> from Queens or something. Let me it's stop, possible. man. I love New York, man. Shout out to New York. All right, Mike, I think New York is done. our biggest base on the show, actually. <laughs> no, no, that's why I be talking shit, Mike. Um, <laughs> Mike, okay, he's about so to send them Bun home, too. Mike, Bun B, MC Light, Nicki Minaj, Ludacris. Mm, I want to start with Bun B. Let's start with Bun B. And then we're okay. going to go... Then we'll go Nicki. Let's go Nicki after that. Okay. Putting Just, for Mad Max. Just for Mad Max. Man, Max, I don't know nothing. Impact, Freddie or Bun? That's Bun. Bun. Live performance, that's Bun. That's Bun. Lyrics, Uncle I Bun. I think that's Bun, yeah. Storytelling. That's Freddie, I think. That's good. Me too. Classic albums, it's actually Freddie. That's Freddie. And Bun has Bun. a lot of uh, solo albums to choose from, and that's still Freddie. It is. He doesn't have an Alfredo. 
Uh, as much as I like Trill, Trill's not Alfredo. He got five mics. Isn't that the one that got five mics? It is. I don't care. It's not better than Alfredo. Mm-hmm. Classic songs. That's Bun. Yep. Longevity of albums. Bun. Yeah. Longevity of songs. B U N B. Yeah, he's moving, moving on. on. Yeah. Freddie would agree. He's a big Pimp C fan. P Y S. That shit hard. Is that no 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 P Y S? I think that's Skinny Pimp. Actually, is that Skinny? I had never heard that sample before. He, he took a Pimp C sample and did I'm something sure, we don't want. Yeah, but he talks about Pimp a lot. And you know me, I'm a big 3-6 fan. That was a 3-6 song that I had never heard before. That when they sampled that from, I actually had to go to whosampled.com to check it out. And it was an underground record. And it made me think, did Biggie get his flow from that Skinny Pimp verse? Where he was like, it's a, uh, 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 like, you know what I mean? It it had what, that. the Notorious Thugs verse, you mean? Hmm? Yeah, the Notorious, you mean the Notorious Thugs, Thugs, verse. Thugs verse? Yeah. I could see that, that flow I could sounded see. very much like that skinny pimp flow from that sample. Y'all can check it out for yourself. It's out there. Lupe. And Bun. Or Bun. Impact. Impact is Bun. Live performance. I don't know much about Lupe's live performance. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I'm sure he's a Me great too. live performer. But I, I haven't had the pleasure of seeing it. I saw him perform Mural once, but... Classic albums. Classic albums. That's Lupe, man, I think. Classic songs is Bun. Yeah. Longevity of album and songs is Bun. Classic collaborations, Bun. Mm-hmm. We're done here, game. Impact, Bun. Okay. Live performance, Bun. Mm-hmm. Lyrics, Bun. Right? Over the game? Yeah. No. I Maybe. Think so. I don't think the game has a murder verse. I'm trying to think right now what's game's best verse or best lyrical display. Does he even Give have something bun. like what mm-hmm. Bun did on Big Pippin? You know what I mean? Give me Bun. Yeah. Classic albums. That's a game. Uh huh. Classic songs is Bun. Longevity of albums and songs is Bun. Bun. <laughs> Yeah, Bun's Cam. got a steamroller. Yeah, yeah, Bun yeah. and Cam, Bun I like this one. Let's go with Bun and Cam. Yeah, Bun B and Cam, I like that. Impact. Cam. That's Cam. Live performance. I think that yeah. might be Cam. I do too. Lyrics, that's Bun. Bun. Storytelling is Bun. Classic albums, it's Cam. Yeah. Is classic songs Bun over Cam? I don't think so, man. I, I, don't, I don't think know. so either. Yeah, I don't think Longevity so. of albums is bun. Yeah. Longevity of songs is bun. Classic collaborations, fascinating. Huh. No, I think that's bun. Remember when bun had that feature run where he was on <laughs> everything? Where right. he, yeah, when Pimp C was in jail the first time, bun right. had a crazy feature run. Career longevity quality. That's bun. We're done here. Styles. Impact. Bun. Live performance of styles. Mm-hmm. So is lyrics and storytelling, in my opinion. The styles? Lyrics mm-hmm. and storytelling, yeah. Styles is a better lyricist than Bun. Classic albums. That's Bun. Let me, let me we get got the UGK bun, stuff in there. Well, I was thinking the Locks' best album is not Touching, Riding Dirty. No. Classic songs. Classic. It might be style. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it actually is. Yeah. Because you got the lock stuff in there, you got the feature stuff, and you got his stuff, yeah. Yeah. Longevity of albums and songs is bun. Yep. Classic collaborations, that might be styles, That's too. That's styles, too. Yeah. Career longevity quality, that might be styles, too, because styles is not stopped, Mike, he until he's retiring. I, I give you that. And they, and they came out not too far apart. Relative, yeah, that style. So, Bun's gonna stop at Styles. Man, Styles is stopping a lot of folks. 
Styles is a problem. See, when you see stuff like that happen, that's like somebody we should highlight and be like, maybe we should pull Styles out and see, you know what I'm saying, and try again if, if he keeps on stopping people from moving past them. You know what I'm saying? It might be like, hold on, he might be too low. That's how I look at somebody styles. like they might be too low, Mike. It's like when we putting people in, it's like, oh, you can't get past that guy? Put a couple marks by his name every time somebody can't get past him. Right now, three people try to get past can I? They said so, we're okay, we got Styles is this you want to do Nicky. Let's go Nicky. You said you want to do Nicky. Yep. Hold on, let me cross blood off. Oh, let me see yeah. if I can uh, grab my other camera. That's cool. I want to make sure we're crystal clear for the people out there. But no, you can go ahead and start. I hear you. Uh, Nikki and Freddie, Impact. That's Nikki. Nikki. Yep. Live performance is Nikki, too. Yep. Lyrics is Freddie. Yeah. Storytelling is Freddie. Classic album is Freddie. Huh. Classic, song. Classic songs is Nikki. That's Nikki. Yep. Longevity of albums is actually Nikki. Yeah. Longevity of songs is Nikki. I'm sure Nikki's going to breeze through this one. Classic collaborations is Nikki. That's Nikki. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Lupe. Impact. Nikki. Nikki. Live performance, Nikki. Mm hmm. Lyrics and storytelling. And classic albums all go to Lupe. Yep. Classic songs go to Nikki. Longevity of albums go to Lupe. Okay. Longevity of songs goes to Nikki. Longevity of songs, yeah. Classic collaboration goes to Nikki. Yep. Career longevity quality, Mike. Lupe's still making music. Yeah, I go that. I give that to Lupe. Voice. Got a tiebreaker on our hands. Is that what it is? It's down to voice? It's Nikki. Think Nikki got the better rap voice? I'm not mad at that assessment. Yeah, I do. I hmm. think when she comes on, it's more identifiable. That is correct. Hmm. Okay. You can chat. You can throw it up in the poll. I Let's know, do that. I know dumb it down. I know dumb it down, and his whole clan up in here losing their minds. It's like I know. They <laughs> <laughs> I have been here. Let's see. Let me get these cameras switched out real quick. Your man's going to collaborate is what I'm noticing from the Lupe thing. He keep losing that classic collaboration thing. Yeah. And he keep losing that impact in live performance things. This is why this is a totality of who you are. Yeah. He's... Not just who you are lyrically. Not how you're just your best album sounds or your best three album sounds. It's everything. All right. Everything. So let's see. It's in the poll. We're going to get to 50 votes. Is that what we're going to do? Uh, let's make it 25. This will happen faster. Well, Nikki is blowing them out. up. Oh, let's see. Huh? 20 votes in already. It's 50 50. Lupe's winning. Lupe won. Oh, nope. 32, 35. Nikki's winning. Nope. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> This happens fast. Let's get to 50 votes. I think that'd be fair. We did that with the other one. That should be the barrage. Cool. See, okay. this is a, um, you know, we, we respect the votes. Nobody's cooking the books over here. First to 50. Okay, we got 40. Yeah, right, Nikki's going to win this. Five more. Please. All right, two more. Yeah, it yeah, looks like Nikki. Nikki's going to win. Nikki's a better rap voice. Yeah, she does, Mike. It's just, yeah. Okay, there it is. All right, well, let me end the uh -huh. poll so it doesn't get skewed. Yep, 51 vo votes, 55% Nikki. Yeah, wait for all the Lupe fans to go nuts on us, Mike. Yeah, they're, they're going to really hate this. <laughs> Game to Nick. Impact, Nikki. Yep. Live performance, Nikki. Yep. Lyrics, game. Yeah. Storytelling, game. Yeah, Nikki don't really tell stories like that. Classic albums, game. Yeah. Classic songs, Nikki. Yep. Longevity of albums. <laughs> That's game. You got the documentary. Longevity of songs. That's game, too. You think Not that's... Not over Nikki. Okay. 
Too much of Nikki shit still in rotation, man. Okay, that's cool. What game? What game got still playing? Because I'm thinking like hate it or love it. I'm thinking uh, from the documentary. Right, you talking about? Again. But you talking about? But see, that's what I'm saying. You reaching back for about one or two or three records when she yeah, got about twenty. She got a whole lot. And she got a whole lot. Even though her, hers comes in at like what two thousand eight ish. Right, but, but they Monster still really spinning. Helps her out. They still spinning. They still spinning. Yeah, Monster helps her out a lot too. It does. Classic collaborations. That's Nikki. Nikki. Career longevity quality. That's game. That's game. Ooh, Mike comes down to voice again. That's game. To me. That's Unless y'all want to uh, poll that. No, I think that's game. Yeah. I think, I think that's Nikki's one of game's strongest suits, his rap voice. Got a great rap voice, in my opinion. Always yeah. has. I mean, you even get his rap voice confused with Nas sometimes. Shit. It's got a great rap voice. Yeah. Um, okay, so MC Light? Luda Chris or MC Light? Light? Okay. Yeah, MC Light. All right. Now Light. she has a great rap voice. She has an epic rap voice, she has Mike. A great rap voice. <laughs> don't let it get look, don't get it, don't let it get the voice against her. A lot of dudes in trouble. Oh yeah. Trouble. For real. Impact. Light or Freddy. That's light. That's light. Do we got a starlight it, 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 all the way at the top? <laughs> She's going to get past Freddy. <laughs> She's probably going to get... No, let's do it. No, no, no. Okay, we'll be fair. fair. We'll be fair. Live performance. I've seen Light perform, and she's great. She is. I hadn't seen going light. Freddy. Lyrics is Freddy. Yeah. Storytelling might be Light, Mike. It is. Georgie Porgy. Poor Georgie, I mean. She's got other stories. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? If you listen to Cappuccino. her game on records, she, 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 she tells a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. Classic albums is Freddie. Classic songs is light, Mike. Of course. Longevity of albums. That's light. Light it, to Yes, light. but here's what I'm saying. Like, 20 years from now, that ain't going to be light. They're going to be Freddie for Alfredo. Think so? That's yes. saying a lot. She got some classics. Alfredo. Longevity of songs, that's definitely light. Yep. Yeah, she done with it. Yeah. Light and Lupe, Impact, that's light. Yep. Live performance is light. Yep. Lyrics is Lupe, storytelling is Lupe. Classic albums is Lupe. Yeah, that's true. Classic songs is light. Yep. Longevity of albums is light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought you, yeah, yeah. That's light. Light. Yeah. Classic collaborations. That's light. She got the uh, I Want to Be Down remix. She got. She's yeah. on self destruction. Yeah, she is. In scene. Light moves on. Yeah. MC Light and Mickey Minaj, Mike. Oh, man. All right. Impact. <sighs> That's Nikki. That's Nikki. I hate to admit like that, but it's Nikki. So is live performance, Mike. Mm-hmm. It is. So is lyrics. I want to poll that. I don't want to do that without the people being able to chime in on that. But I feel you. I I, I feel you. Uh, who's the better lyricist? You can go on to the next category. Storytelling is light. Yeah. Fascinating classic albums. I think that's light. Me too. Light as a rock. Classic songs, Nikki. I don't know about that, but yeah, it is. Okay, you know, this is a, I have to step out of my generation, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just keep it all the way real. You're right. Longevity of albums and songs. Slight. Yeah. The longevity Classic is there. Yeah. yeah, they got light as the better lyricist. She's blowing Nikki away in this. Okay. That's cool. Hey, yeah. I'm cool with that. You know how I feel about light. Ooh, Mike. So, I mean, it's getting tight. Career longevity quality. I think that's light. I think that's Nikki. You think so? I think Nikki's falling off over the past when the last time light did an album Mike think about this did light release an album after 1997 I it thought she did in your career I thought she been did. where what, what's the window of lights uh 
career look like? Is it like from 88 to 97, you think? Ish. It looks that way. Ish. It looks very much like a 10-year career. Nikki's definitely on Nikki's a longer run. Nikki's still going, even though her stuff's not hitting like that. And I say that respectfully. I know somebody so said... So Nikki or like? Um, what, who? Uh, I Nikki's think... been more viable for longer. That's and what Nikki I mean is... Still, yeah, you're right. I mean, she got a record with Ice Spice out right now. I know somebody said they're going to take a shot every time I say respectfully. So, you know, take two shots right there. Well, respectfully do it when Coop does it too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Nikki gets, gets that category. I mean, am I wrong though? Like, no, no, you're not like... wrong. I mean, she is more viable. Uh, I think when Light showed up on uh, Commons Like Water for Chocolate, it was dope. But it wasn't like, you know, what Nikki kind of commands at this point in her career. So I think it's right. fair. Yeah. We're down to the voice, Mike. That's light. Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, Styles P is a, a maniac. He just keeps making one or two quality uh, albums year after year. Even Jada says that P is the best rapper in the locks. Severely underrated. It's a cold brother. With the microphone in his hand. Yeah. OJ Winston yeah. with the super chat says, Peace, brothers. What about T.I. versus Push the T? For like should a be T.I. should be ahead of Push the T. I don't know if he gets on the list right now, but he should be. It's 35 to 31, Push the T's ahead. Hmm. I think you're forgetting about the clip stuff, Mike. Yeah. And the Justin Timberlake stuff. Like, he has a Justin Timberlake record just like. T.I. did. Just for shits and giggles, where did he beat T.I. at? Or where would he beat T.I. at? I mean, you want to know what? Let's fill out the 50, and that's what you want to know what? How about this? We'll put a star by that. Put two stars by both of their names, and we can maybe go through that right quick. Okay. Uh, all right. Light versus game. Impact is light. light. Live performance is light. Mm -hmm. Lyrics is game. Okay. So it's so it's storytelling to me. And so is classic albums. Okay. Classic songs still might be light. Yep. I agree. Long albums and songs is light because the light is a rock, Mike. See, yep. when you make a great album and it holds, don't matter. Yep. It goes a long classic way. Classic collaborations. Mm, it's I light. still think that's light, yeah. I do too. Yeah, she moving on. Cam, impact. Light. That might be Cam. You think so? Dipset was, Mike, Dipset was massive, and he's at the head of the snake. I understand that, but I think the uh, impact that Light had on female hip-hop is pretty. I think you're looking at it through your lens, and you're not understanding that Kim and Nicki have come along and exceeded that impact. And they people did. would tell you, And people would tell you in their day that maybe Latifah was more impactful to the upliftment of women than hmm. Light was because of the records, like, Unity and Just Another Day, and um, and uh, what's the other one? Um, ladies First. Oh, Ladies First. Do you think that I feel like Light's kind of an inspiration to Latifah as well? This is the thing. Light, what she uh -huh. ushered in, didn't last a long time. Like I think she right. ushered in the brats. You know, bosses, you know what I'm saying? Like that. And when Kim came in 96, that was kind of done. Rod Digger tried to, you know, kind of resurrect that female lane in, uh, what was that, 2000, which I love that album. But I, it's not a lot of MCs that was following MC Light's path like that. I guess you could say to an extent Lauren kind of was, but she didn't really keep on the rap thing. So, yeah. Um... Cam had dudes buying imitation pink furs, Mike. No, you're right. I think that Cam's they, impact. Pink diamond rings right. that they couldn't afford. I mean, Cam's yeah. impact is still going. That's what I'm saying. That's Cam. No disrespect to Light. That's Cam, though. It's dip set. And we tune in to Cam's show. Is like, no, a lot of performance is Cam, actually. Yeah. I would give Cam lyrics, too. Okay. I agree with that. Storytelling and classic albums. Storytelling is like mm -hmm. classic albums is Cam. It is. Classic songs might be Cam too. It is. MJ say ain't nobody listening to MC like 
Oof, yeah, rough, man. It's the truth, Mike. People still listening to Kim. People still listening to Kim and Nikki's old stuff. They're not listening to Light's old stuff. So the impact's not there. You gotta, you, the stuff still gotta be viable. It gotta be, Mike. When we have these Purple Rain and Thriller conversations, people let us have them. That's how we still know those records are that damn good. They'd be like, no, no, no it's right. Thriller and Purple Rain. They let them have that right quick. Yeah, they ain't not letting. Mm -mm. You're right. Longevity of albums. I try to fight for your life. Longevity of songs is like yeah. Classic collaborations is Cam. Yep. Yeah, that's where she stops, Mike. Okay. Kill her. Luda. Luda, let's get Luda in there. Y'all love Luda so much, and so do I. But I don't have him as high as many of you guys do. Mike, my immediate assumption is that he's going to jump Freddie and Lupe. Oh yeah, I think so too. I think that him and Cam is going to be uh, interesting. No, I want to be Nikki and Luda. Impact. Nikki and Luda. Impact, Nikki. Live performance is Luda. That's Luda. Yeah, you remember Lyrics. when he performed uh, Move, Bitch, right before the MTV Awards in the middle of Times Square? That shit was crazy. Lyrics <laughs> is Luda. It is. Storytelling is Nikki, actually. Food of stories don't be good, Mike. <laughs> you don't like Diamond in the Back like that? What Nikki story has she got? She's just a better storyteller, Mike. Well, you, you don't have any evidence? You just say that she's a better storyteller? No, I just, I just remember like how she references. like When I can't think of somebody having particular storytelling songs, I think about the reference in which they speak when they do tell a story. And she describes and paints a scene of a story better than he does. If you know it's what I'm close, saying? if it's close, like, I want like, to take this to the people. Bitch right quick. Like, say Luda's lyrics from Move Bitch right quick, and you'll get what I'm talking about. Oh, no. Fights out. I'm about to punch yo. Lights out. Get the fuck back. Guard your grill. Uh, can't stay still. I've been drinking and busting too. I've been cussing too, and I. Been thinking of busting you upside your motherfucking forehead. I don't know if that's the best example, but all right, how about you we get do what this? I'm saying though? I feel what you're like, saying, his delivery. Like, so let's so let's go to like like um matter of fact, what's uh what's the song? What's that song from Pink Friday? The big one. Talk about a moment in life. Yeah, that one too. That's what I'm talking about, Mike. Yeah. I yeah. was thinking about, yep, there it is, your love. Your love, yeah. You know, you know where she's describing the dude? And he keep a dude rags, wave, waves on spin, so they hate on him. I think I've seen him in some time before, or better okay. yet, in another life where I record, like, I was... He, this, okay, yeah. I see Coop with, so, the, with so, the Nikki now, evidence. So, so, now, Ghostface and Raekwon, she's giving you descriptions to let okay. you know how to describe the guy. That's a storyteller. Okay. You gave yeah, the evidence. Yeah, Luda don't do that I'll when you're you setting that. the scene for you. That's what I mean. If you're not a storytelling MC and you don't tell the story, I go to how do you paint the scene of the story that you're telling. Gotcha. She's a better painter of the storytelling scene, yeah. Okay, I think that's fair then. Uh, classic albums is Luda. Yeah, word of mouth. That I think classic time. songs might be Luda. They're just not holding up well. Oh yeah, Luda would beat Nicki in the verses. Right. Longevity of albums is Luda. Yep. Longevity Chicken of Dead is actually his best album. Longevity of songs, that's Luda too. Classic collaborations. That's, that's Luda's Luda. too. Yeah. Luda killed features. Now I give him that. All right. Luda, Chris, and Game. Ooh, I like this one. Me too. Impact. That's Luda. Luda. Live performance, Luda. Yeah. Lyrics is Luda. Yeah. Storytelling's game. Well, let me go back. Do you think lyrically Luda could pull off some things the game has pulled off? Like, I mean, Luda no, can't give but you here's a what I'll tell this okay, so this is the problem with game. He always does really, really well when amongst his peers, but Luda has shown his ass on his peers. No, that's right. Evidence. Have you seen the Major Look remix? No, he did his thing. That, that is a prom Nas and Jada kiss, is it not? It is. So is he not rapping at the hold on? Even let's say that you're like a hardcore New Yorker, and you think that Kiss and Nas have a better verse. On a bad day, it's equal footing. 
and there's not no game shit floating around like there with somebody like Jada and Nas on record. I think the closest. Well, game's you, been on records with Nas. Close, huh? Game's been on a lot of records with Nas. I, Mike, I said at the level because I was actually thinking like, on why you hate the game. No, Nas is is better. Maybe on Letter to the King. Letter to the King is um is a pretty is some pretty special stuff from Game, so I'd give him that. But I feel like Luda lyrically is, it might be a tie, Mike. It might be a tie because they're great lyrically, different ways for different reasons. Yeah, I was gonna say I think Luda is limited lyrically. Put it up in the chat. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, next yeah. poll. Luda or Game lyrically? I like that too. That's interesting. I'm gonna say who's more lyrically skilled. Who's the better lyricist? Yeah. Okay, who's the better lyricist? Be very plain with it. Mm-hmm. I want to be fair. Classic, I don't want to do anything. Classic to songs is Luda, isn't it? Yeah. Longevity of albums, Luda? Yep. Longevity of songs? Is that Luda still? Mm, yeah. I think so. Classic collaborations is Luda. Looks like he beat the game anyway, but I still want to see what people have to say. He did. Yeah. We're going to move on. We'll still hear what people have to say. Yeah. Luda and MC Light, Impact. Um, that's Light. Light. Yeah. Live performance is Luda. Mm hmm. Lyrics is Luda. Yep. Storytelling is Light. Yep. Classic albums is Luda. Yep. Classic songs. Uh, that's Luda. light. I think that's light. I think that's Luda. Cha cha cha. Um, Area codes move. He got a lot of joints. Yeah, he would. And, and I guess my tiebreaker is he would beat MC Light in the verses. He would. Welcome to Atlanta. Yeah, chilling in. What? Longevity of albums, light. Yeah, songs, light. Yeah, classic collaborations is Luda. Yep. Career longevity quality. That actually might be light. I think so. Luda had a very small window, I feel like. Oh, Mike is coming down the voice. Who's got the better voice to you? <laughs> I'm biased. People say uh, my voice sounds like Luda. I still might go um, light, though. I'm going to say light has a better rap voice than Luda. Yeah, I think so, too. Well, that's where Luda's stopping. Mm. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, Dipset officially ended New York's reign in hip-hop. People figure that they could get mediocre bars from their own region. Dipset is the East Coast no limit. Wow, Jay Short's coming with haymakers today. <laughs> Dane with the Super Chat says, Is it me or does Lupe try to sound like the smartest guy in the room? He can get easily turned... Uh, Got tuned out, even though you know he's coming from a good place. Let's not get started on that. <laughs> that was an interesting take, though, Dame. Are you talking about on record or are you talking about on Twitter? I don't understand. Um, Very problematic. <laughs> okay. Who we got next? Well, we have a list of people to choose from, so... I'll tell you where we're at. Mm -hmm. We're at 48, 49, and 50. So three more people get in. I'm going to tell you the list of people who's left. Okay. Fab, Doom, AZ, Beans, Tretch, MJG, CeeLo, Pharrell Munch, Yasin, Foxy, Latifah, Future, Conway, Master Ace. I now, like I do list. have Asterix next to Big L, Big Pun. Andre and Lauren. Can you name those people again? Because I got Fab, Doom, Beanie, Foxy. Those are the ones that I, you know, piqued my interest. AZ. Okay. Tretch. AZ and Tretch. I'm going to put them over here. MJG. Yeah, MJG. Elo. Mm. Pharaoh Munch. I like the Pharaoh Munch choice. Let me put him on this side. Yasin. Yeah. Fox. Latifa. Future Conway Master Ace. All right. I want to do beans. I want to do beans too. I want to do fab also because there's been a lot of fab talk on this show. 
A lot wanna of fab get, talk. Want to get started with fab? Let's get started with fab and then go beans. That's cool. Y'all Freddy love impact. fab. We do too. Impact. 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 That's fab. Live performance. That's Freddie. Is it? Fab's not known as for his performances at all. Hmm. I've seen one of them. Understandably so. Lyrics, Fab. Okay. Storytelling, Freddie. Okay. Classic albums is Freddie, Mike. It is. Classic songs is Fab. Yep. Longevity of albums is Fab. Yep. So is the longevity of songs. Yep. Classic collaborations, that's Fab. That's Fab. Fab's moving on. Fab's moving on. Yeah. Lupe, Impact, Fab. Fab. Live performance, Lupe. This, this is interesting, though. Lyrics, that's Lupe. Lupe. Storytelling, Lupe. Lupe. Classic albums, Lupe. Classic songs, Fab. Yeah. Longevity of albums. Who got here first, Lupe or Fab? I feel like Lupe here first. Nah, Fab got here first. Okay. Longevity of songs. Is that Fab too? That's Fab. Classic collaborations is Fab. Fab, yep. Career longevity quality. That's Fab. I think. It's moving. Nikki. Impact. It's Nikki. Yeah. This should be interesting. Live performance. It's Nikki. Lyrics is Fab. Yep. Storytelling is Nikki, unless you know some Fab stories. Hmm. I don't off top. I want. I want to take that to the chat. You think people take, that to, the take that to the chat? Yeah. Who's a better storyteller, Nikki or Fab? Uh, they both some non-storytelling <laughs> ass niggas. Um. Don't forget, Mike. We got to get Red McFly in here at seven for. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, uh, 15, like, 20 minutes, and then we'll wrap up with the list and get out of here. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, classic albums. That is, uh, that's Nikki. I think. She got pink. Pants. I think, too. Uh, we got the storyteller in the chat, too, the poll. Okay. Classic songs. That's Nikki. Longevity of albums and songs. Is that fab? That's, that's fab. That's fab, yeah. Classic collaborations. That's Nikki. Yeah. I don't know, man. Fab got a lot of collabs. Nick does too, though. Not like they're not as epic as Nikki, Mike. Fab Pretty is epic on that damn uh, Jennifer Lopez Get Right remix. Slim with the tilted grim on 20 inch. Yeah, they still, they still playing throw some more in every strip club and every club across the country, Mike. And that's just a hook. And that's just some hook work. Yeah. Stop that. Isn't he on, uh, he's on the card of three, right? Fab. Correct. Yeah. I love his verse on there. I mean, he was just what on what uh, say, Conway. Cow, fettuccine, tray pound pasta. You reach for this medallion, you must like Italian, nigga. You only see me pushing if the driver's tired. <laughs> I like Fab. Fab smashed the OJ, too. Yeah. Huh. People got fab um, for the storytelling. That's cool. Yeah. Career longevity quality. Fab. Fab might be stronger than we think. Mike, it's coming down to voice between fab and Nikki. Who are you taking? Not as strong as you think. I'm taking Fab's voice, me personally. Is this another poll? It is, Mike. I don't think Fab has a better rap voice than Nicki. I don't. I think he does. Let's What's see. so great about rap's Fab, uh, uh, Fab's rap voice? Because my thing is, is that when I hear him on a record with somebody like a Jeezy or a Jada Kiss, it's like, oh, you better have the best verse lyrically. Mm. Or like on the record uh, on the Carter Three with Wayne and Jewel Santana. You think he got a better rap voice than Wayne or Jewel's? I don't. 
Right. So when you're saying he got a better voice than Nikki, what you trying to say about Nikki voice? Because Nikki got better voices than all of them, in my opinion. I don't like when Nikki does all that animated stuff. I think when she's yeah, the who she rap is. voice. <laughs> Leroy Green with the super chat says, "Coop, the real issue you have with Lupe, you have with Lupe is you smart enough to know that Lupe probably is the smartest guy in the room, and it bothers you." Lol. No, no, no. <laughs> he, no my, I, I, I'll, I'll give him his credit. He is oftentimes, you know, probably for most of his life, the smartest guy in the room. I know what that feels like. So when he's in the room with me, that's just not the fucking truth. All right, next. Back to <laughs> Jay this. Short with the super chat. I don't care. I don't care how much he teach at MIT and Harvard. That don't mean shit to somebody like me. It's like, nah, fam. I see you out here. Like, tuh. Lord. He Jay gonna pick that Shakespeare shit back up. This is my wife that want to do this. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pick the Shakespeare shit back up since he's so smart. Y'all need to have a live debate, uh, or however y'all were trying to have. Man, he need to have a live history lesson and go like learn the history of who he keep on edifying so much. How about that? How about he go do his own history research first and find out the person he think is such an excellent playwright didn't even write most of the shit. He just reinterpreted it. Mm. In today's world, he wouldn't make this top fifty. Next, <laughs> Jay Short with the super chat says that bad album uh, MC Light did with Missy Elliott was a missed opportunity. If they would have found a way to make that work, she'd be up there with Kim. I think that was a missed opportunity, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I the like people the in the chat are... Party and keep on. I oh, love yeah, I love records. that. I love both of those records. They got Fab's that's that Diana voice Ross sample, here. ain't it? That's that Diana Ross shit, ain't it? The mm-hmm. Cold Rocker Party, that's that Diana Ross shit. Yep, turning mm-hmm. me. Um, right. We got 49 votes here, and it looks like Fab is taking Nikki for the rap voice. 61% okay. to 39%. Okay, that's cool. Fab's moving on. All right. Um, Christopher Hogan with the Super Chat says, Too Short, Jeezy, and DJ Quick got to be top 50. I'll write that. I don't know about Jeezy, but yeah, I'll write it down for y'all. I'm putting Short down. Of course. Too Short would be interesting in a uh, rubric like this. Right, because he got a lot of this stuff checked off. Yeah. All right, um... Fab versus game. Impact. I think that's game, actually. Me too, because game helped bring a coast back. Yep. Live performance would be game for me, too. Mm-hmm. Lyrics is fab. Yeah. Storytelling's game. Yep. Classic albums is game. Yep. Classic songs is game to me. Yep. But... I agree. Okay. Longevity of albums think that's game. The documentary, man. Last song. Like a million rings still ring bells. Yeah. yeah. Like the album like that rings bell. Mike, one, two, three. If he's so if he if he holding so much weight, why game beat him so easily? Okay. Killer. And understand and understand this is what I mean. I'm worried about the people that are at the bottom. Oh, if you're at the bottom of this list, you might not make it in this list because we got people we gotta put up in here still. Yeah. Right. Beanie Sigma. This is the first you're not the final one. Beanie Siegel, and then we'll get, uh, you know what I'm saying, to our guests. Then bring Red in, yeah. yeah. I think once we do Beans and one more person, though, we can uh, solidify the 50, and maybe we'll pull one more person out and call it a show. Okay. All right, Beans and Freddie, Impact. Well, that's Beanie Siegel. <laughs> <laughs> Siegel, Siegel, Desert Eagle. Who else but me? Live performance. I think that's Siegel, too, man. I seen Siegel go out there and rap for 10 minutes. Lyrics. That's Siegel. We're going to have to skip Siegel up, man. <laughs> Storytelling. <laughs> People understand that's this Siegel, man a monster, man. Mike. Yeah, it's Siegel's a monster. a monster, man. I think we need to skip Siegel up 20 <laughs> spots just to see. And then if he can't get that, nope. let's skip him up nope. the way I'm gonna Eminem take, is. I'm going to tell, nope, tell you exactly what we're putting him, Mike. We're putting him next to Styles at 39. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, let's do Impact. that. Impact, Beans or Styles? Seagull. Agree. Live performance. Seagull. That's style. Really? I think that's style. Okay. Yes. You going off of the versus performance? And you know what? The locks, they're, they're really good performance. Period. It's so epic, Mike. They said, they, they said we learned from Puff. It's like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. You <laughs> know what? The locks vibe. in general are dope performers. They are. She concluded. Lyrics, 
Well, that's that's still beans. Yeah, as crazy right. as that seemed to say against somebody like Styles. Guess yeah. what? Same thing with the storytelling. Oh yeah, man. Classic albums. That's yeah. beans. Feel it in the air, man. The story. Classic songs. That's Styles. <sighs> that's Styles because of the feature stuff. But yeah. Longevity of albums. That's beans. Yeah. The truth. Beans is special, man. I know Beans I keep saying that, but damn. Longevity of songs, that styles. Okay. Classic collaborations, that styles. I think that styles, yeah. Career longevity quality. That's actually styles. That styles. It's tied, Mike. Voice. Seagull, to me. Put it in the chat, though. Okay. Because they are tied. Let's see. We got it. We got to Um, this is gonna be a tight race. We're gonna do fifty votes, right? Uh, Might have to do hundred. I don't know. Eh. Siegel and Styles is coming down. The voice. I don't know. Let's see. Siegel and Styles. Y'all know who these guys are. I ain't got to spell it all out for you. Uh, Critical Mass of the Super Chat says, Jeezy got two albums, uh, one-on-one in Recession, classic mixtapes, and helped take eight, uh, 808 trap music worldwide. I'm from London. Hold on. The disrespect is crazy. The Hold disrespect on, is coming from me, something. Critical Mass. Go ahead. What, up some, what longevity of songs do Styles have over Beans? I was thinking more so the featured stuff. I was thinking like Last Day. I was thinking I was like, thinking a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like money, That's power, what respect. I was thinking, yeah. If you think I'm jiggy, uh, uh, Puff Daddy and the family stuff. That's mm-hmm. what I was thinking about. 24 hours to live on Mace's album. I was thinking about all that stuff. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Siegel got rap voice, looks like. I mean, we got 45 votes in, but he's winning 64% to, you know, 36. Kind of figured. Yeah. Just right. short with the super chat and then we'll get uh we'll get our guest in. He says, uh Fab is a personal favorite, but let's be real. That multisyllable style makes him sound better than he actually is. Dope metaphors, but there is no substance behind it. It's why he can't make a classic. I think that's a very great assessment. Let's do to live no, let's go ahead and bring our guy on. Wanna do to live? I mean, we got one minute. Lip. Impact. That's beans. Live performance. That might be to live. I get to live his props lyrics. Lyrics that might be to live. You still think that's Siegel? I think Siegel's the better overall MC, but if we just talking about bar for bar, lyric for lyric, huh, I don't know. I, it's hard to front on to live as a lyricist. That's like his strongest, you know what I'm saying, suit. I have you pissing in your trunk like Caruth. Bullets hit your chest like a blunt rolled loose. <laughs> I'm the hard corn licking nigga hundred proof. I'll bring the storm on you niggas, lace your boots. Matter of fact, bring out the string, bring a noose, hang yourself. Matter of fact, bang yourself like Cheddar Bob. No. Yeah. He never spit crazy like, like that. I like the See, Cheddar eat Bob. Ass like, See, eat that ass like Dama. Stretch your body out like recliner. Stretch my middle finger to your honor. <laughs> like fuck the world. That's my persona. The drama. Drop a building like Osama. You vagina. <laughs> no. Stab it. Yo, no. we got we got to do a poll on that though, Coop. Because a lot of people are no. saying Talib. Coop is totally I make, so. I make niggas slide like little dicks and wet pussy. Open up the whole strip <laughs> like Monopoly. And dare one of y'all to land on my property. <laughs> Think you getting dope from my community chest? Blow, blow, two to your chest. Y'all niggas can't pass go because it costs to pass. <laughs> Y'all niggas cheap like Baltic Ave. <laughs> no time lips not better than that. You want me to keep going? I can keep going. You selling the people on Seagull right now. Tell me what your life like. Mine's is real. Mm-hmm. Everything signed and sealed. No, Talib don't. Mm-mm. Stop that. <laughs> Christopher Hogan with the that. super chat. He says, you tripping, Mike. Jeezy got the streets. 
I guess I Man, am tripping. We'll we gonna pa- we we gonna pause and let Beans win this lyric thing and bring on Red McFly before Talia finishes losing the Beans, Mike. Let's go. <laughs> How about we do this? Let me uh let me hang up with you. I got you both in like a conference type of you know call. Okay. So I'm gonna hang up and I'm gonna hit you right back. <sighs> You better be washing this man. <laughs> Y'all better not pick no Talib over. Ooh, ooh, we're going to fight the chat. Let's see. Hold on one second. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to hit you right back, Coop. I'll be here. Yeah. Like Baltic ooh. Ave. Hold on one second. We're going to get our guests in here real quick. Uh, McFly is in the building. Uh, okay. And we're going to get to y'all super chats, too. Boom, boom. Start to come. Make sure we we get the uh, get the peoples in here. And while we're getting everybody in here, let me get some of these super chats. Jermaine says, "There's no reason why. Ho- There's a reason why Ho said lyrically, Talib Kweli. I knew somebody was going to bring that up." And he also said, "Truthfully, I want to rhyme like common sense, but I did five mil, and guess what? I ain't been rhyming like common sense." <laughs> so he's also telling you, it's like, no, 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 I'm not that kind of lyricist. Because being that type of lyricist don't get you all the way up to the top of the food chain. Hello. What a diss. <laughs> Niggas act like they he was giving them props or something. <laughs> he wasn't giving either one of them props. He literally sold. That was it's crazy to me. Truth be told, I might be, as in I might be lyrically Talib Kweli, as in he's giving you somebody as a roundabout way. He's, he was pointing out the people How about at this, the Mike? time that weren't making that rap money like that, but they were rapping Mike, on that Lyrical Miracle stuff. Mike, what would a Prime J do on a record with Quali? Because we've heard Prime J next to Beans. There ain't that much of a difference now, is there? Oh, no, that's real. Hold on. Um, McFly sent me another link. Maybe this is the link. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, I, All right, I, I got him on the conference. Is he there? Uh, no, no. We're waiting on the uh, chime in. Because I think we just... Hold on. I'm going to send you another link and see if maybe this isn't... Okay. Let's see if it works. Yeah. Leroy Green with the Super Chat says, Coop, um, you're a smart guy. Really the only person I ever heard make a solid argument for Nas. So I got to hear why Beans is dope, but he's not Black Thought. So you got to hear why Beans is dope, but he's not Black Thought. Well, we ain't got him up against Black Thought yet. I mean, in a vacuum, I think Beans is better than Black Thought because Beans has proven that he can make classic solo material that Thought still like. I like, understand it's like the truth and the becoming is better than cheat codes, Mike. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the thing black- is, man, that nigga, um, I'm sorry, man, as great as Black Thought is, he can't make it in the club produced by Timbaland. Or feel it in the air, Mike. No, it's true. Yeah, no. I agree with you. Like, like, how about this? Siegel can do some of the things lyrically that Thought can do. But Seal can also do some of the things emotionally that Scarface can do. Exactly. Mm-mm. You know, that Siegel... ain't no regular dude. I keep trying to tell y'all that man's a top five MC talent all time. Listen to me. He's a top five MC talent. He has everything. He's very much like that guy right there. I was going to say, Siegel's very biggie like. He didn't have very, very he didn't have Puff in his corner like Biggie did. Mike, if he would have had a Puff, Mike. I know, I know. It's a shame, and you know, and that's why I take extra gratification in the fact that mm-hmm. somebody like Kanye West came out of that camp and possibly became the biggest person in that camp because Siegel should have had that opportunity. Because Seagull was getting second-hand beats. Kanye was watching beats. what was happening to Seagull. Mm-hmm. Mike, Kanye was watching what was happening to Seagull. That's yeah. what made Kanye help forge his own path. He's like, oh, hold on. Kanye was making beats for Seagull first. And he saw those beats that he was making for Seagull end up with the big guy. Yeah. He's like, okay, well, shit, I know how these niggas are. Like, well Let me hold on to some of these. Gonna go t- <laughs> right. If you're just going to keep on taking fan beats, you right. might, I might as well just go work for the big guy since you're just going to keep taking fan beats. Right. Uh, I'm like, he, I knew do I knew do it again with singles when I heard Stop Chill from the Rock Wild. I was like, yep. Yep. I'm like, y'all had a session together. It was Seagull session where them, them records came out from. How many records did he possibly take from Seagull, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Mike, I think the blueprint was for Siegel. I think so, too. If you listen to those Soul Sample records, don't Beans technically sound better on those records? I thought Heart like, of the City, I thought Heart of the City specifically was for Siegel. And I think it's interesting that Siegel's not on the blueprint as well as he would fit on that album. The only feature on there is M, and that one feature should really have been Siegel. Should have really have been Mike, Siegel. Mike, let me ask you something. When you hear Jay's flow on Heart of the City, that ain't Bean's flow? Yeah. First of fat boys Let's break, break up. up. And now every, every day, day I, I wake, wake up, up. Yeah. somebody got something to say. Yeah? What's all the fucking fuss for? Because I'm grubbing more, and I pack heat like I... Yeah, that's Bean's. Honestly, and I, I feel and I pack heat like I'm the oven door. That sound like seagull flow. Niggas that sound pray like and forward. pray on my downfall. Yeah, that does sound like seagull's flow. I have this theory. I have no way of knowing, right? I just gave you mine, Mike. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Heart of the City is that record that brought the blueprint to be. I think that's the record where they say, you know what? We need to do some soul sample theme type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, because to me. That is the best song from the early parts of that cultivated album. Are we still waiting on um McFly? Yeah, I'm hitting them right now. Okay. Well we could keep going. Uh Siegel beat uh Talib on the lyricist side. According yeah, to the yeah. people. Seventy five votes and uh seventy one percent to twenty five percent. Twenty nine percent, excuse me. Man, oh, man. I really ain't feeling Talib, man. He's just not better than Beans, Mike. Classic songs. Beans or Talib? Oh, that's Beans. Classic albums? Was Beans? Yeah. Yeah. Longevity of albums? That Why give Talib that Talib. Black Star album? That, yeah, Why give that Talib the Black yet. Star? Black no, because that held up, Mike. Hmm? I said t- Black Star held up. I'll give it longevity yeah, of albums. for sure. We um, just wrapped up a respiration, so yeah. Longevity of songs? Is that Talib too because of the Black Star album? I think so. He's asking, "How does he get in, Mike?" I thought I, I thought I sent him a link. How, how about we do this? Let me send him a link. Um, uh, where is he at? You, you got him on the text. I got him on Instagram right now. Okay, let me. Uh, I'm gonna send you a link. Yeah, send me and a he link. Could just, send he could just chime in. I'll text you the link if that works. Yeah, just text me the link. I copy it and send it over. All right, cool, cool. We sitting over here, you know, doing our tech shit right now. Classic um, collaborations, Beans or Talib? Oh man, I think that might be Beans, bro. It is. Cause he's still done more classic feature work than Talib has. Can I interest you in maybe Adrenaline off? Uh, things fall apart. I forgot all about you know? that. I wasn't even counting that. Right. Right. Stuff everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. The beans is done with Talib, Mike. All right. The link's coming, too, by the way. Okay. Uh, we'll stop right there. Okay. Uh, Beanie Siegel moves on up the ladder like he deserves. He should. Hold on, Coop. My bad. Uh, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to find your number on my... I'm trying to find your... Oh, there we go. Here we go. Right, I'm sending I just had to do the same thing because we own the other devices, right? Right. Okay. Cool. I just texted to you. Let me get some of these super chats while we're doing that. Still waiting for it. There right. it goes. Oh. Boom. Got it. All right. Christopher Hogan with the super chat says, Who MC Light beating in a versus? But she's top 50? No. Who? But she might not make it. Mike, because we have other people. Do we got 50 cent to go? No, we got 50 in. Okay, I th- that's what I thought. Chef Boy R50. Ooh, Hustle's Ambition came on today. That Ooh, I love crazy. it. Every woman in my life, they cause confusion and shit. So like Nino and New Jack, I holla, cancel that bitch. Look at me. This is <laughs> the, the life, life I, I chose. chose. Niggas around me so cold. Nigga, so my cold, now my heart, heart done turn, froze. Bro. I was like, oh, I felt that shit today. That nigga yeah. 50, man. That shit crazy. 50 a problem, Mike. Yeah, he is. Hold on. Where 50 at on here? Where is 50? Did we do 50? Oh, Mike, I don't think we have. We haven't done 50. We ain't got 50 in there? Yes, man. We got to get 50 in there. We got to get 
We got to do 50 top next. Hits. We're doing 50 right after Beans. And then we'll call it a day because that'll give us 50. Oh, we're doing 50 for our 50th person. That's perfect. Hey. All right. Um, I just, hold on. Who is just pearly things? Uh, we got it. I'll get to pearly things hey, in a minute. Yo, yo, what's what good? Up? What's going on? What's good? Let me get everybody on the screen, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. How you doing, Red? Yeah, everything good. Can't complain. What's good? How what's good? You? No, no, we appreciate you coming on with us. I'm sorry. Sorry it's taking so long uh, to bring you up on the show. We've been having some, some setbacks, but uh, first off, I wanted to say shout out to you and the work that you just did on Fuego's album. We just talked to Fuego last week. Uh, oh, okay. you, did, you did Warehouse, mm -hmm. which along with Heavy D is, I think, are the best joints on there. So I'm no, I, did, I, did, uh, I did Warehouse and the one they just dropped um, with Uncle Murder, uh, Take a Look. Yeah, Take a Look. You were shooting the video when we tried to hit you last time, right? Mm-hmm. Mm yeah. Right. So tell us a little bit about that and how your whole relationship with Benny has come together just to kind of get started, let people know who you are. Oh, yeah. Um... Basically, I uh, I met I met Benny through a couple of mutual friends, um, Ted City, and my bro Steve Starks. Um, you know, I came around a couple times, told him I got beats. Had Ted, you know, sent him a couple records, and I remember the, I recall one time he had just listened to some of the beats, and he was like, "Nah, I got you." But it was like a, a, some time had went by, so I was kind of like, "Damn, man, artists always be saying that," you know what I mean? But right. Benny definitely kept his word. And he had me, you know, eventually I pulled up, then started getting in the studio with him. I went out to Buffalo. We did like, we did like eight records when I was out there for like a couple days. He had like me and some other producers. And you know, all of the whole BSF team was there. We were just knocking records out all day till like five, six in the morning. Huh. And then um, they, they did like way more records. I just, I did like eight of them while I was there. And then... um. You know, then it just it just turned like that. Why have you fed have two of the records wind up going on bass album? Right. Have you fed uh, any, any word about maybe some of those records are making Benny's upcoming project possibly? I'm hoping. All I could do is hope and pray. I, I just sent him another record the other day. Right. But I don't know if if like he's dedicating that project to uh to Hit Boy and, and Alchemist. You know what yeah, I mean? So I, just you know, I be Hit Boy that. now. Yeah. Yeah. If that's the case, then you know. But now I definitely got some joints they putting on the uh the BSF album. Okay, when is that supposed to drop? I can't even tell I don't I don't know for sure. I don't wanna okay. get the line of it, but I know yeah. it's coming soon though. <laughs> okay. Like we think it's summertime, that's what I'm saying. Like is it gonna bubble this summer and drop this summer or are we looking more like at a fall release? Like Uh I can't I can't say. Okay. I don't wanna say nothing about <laughs> oh, no, 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 it. <laughs> so, so Red, I got a couple questions for you. First, I want you to tell me exactly where the name Red McFly comes from, because I think when I think of McFly, I think of Back to the Future. So I think yeah, of the DeLorean. Yeah, I think yeah, of the right. car. That's exactly, that's exactly where I got it from. Well, well, because it you're from Allentown, right? Mm-hmm. Now, don't so y'all have some sort of car museum there? Yeah, we in do. Allentown. You know about that? <laughs> Oh, fam, I do my research before I pull up on you. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so y'all actually have, what is it, uh, America on Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> so is that kind of like the inspiration from it? Like the, the car museum, America on Wheels, and the McFly, the DeLorean? Just like kind of break that down for me a little bit. Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit of a story I have here. Um, like when I first started rapping, my name was Red Rum. I was living a completely different life, you know what I mean, doing all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? I want, I want to shine a little bit more light, take a little bit of darkness off my name. So I just made it red, cause everybody just called me red anyway. My, even my mother called me red. Everybody just say red, red. So um, I was like, you know, for googling purposes and, and as a business, marketing and everything like that, it don't make sense to my name to just be red, cause if somebody Google red, all kinds of stuff gonna pop up. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna add the McFly on it. I always been a fan of that movie. Part two, particularly, that was my favorite one when they went to the future and all that. The hoverboard. Yeah. Yeah. That was my yeah. favorite one. So, Me you too. know, I just took the name. You know, I always, you know, I like, I like, always like to get fly and all that. So, you know, I just went with the McFly. 
That's a dope name, man. Mm-hmm. And you, it was, at first it was like Red, a.k.a. The Rise of Sun, because I'm, I'm part Japanese. And I was like, that's too damn long. But mm-hmm. then I just made it Red McFly. <laughs> okay. So yeah. t- tell, me, tell me a little bit about your hometown. Tell me about Allentown. Allentown is so, kind of infamous inside PA, but outside not as well known. Now tell yeah. me, how far, how far north is Allentown from Philly, and how far south is it from New York City? All right, so from Philly, we're about an hour away. Okay. In New York, like an hour and 45 minutes away. So you're, so you're so kind of in the middle. middle. Yeah, and the crazy thing about Allentown is that even though it's in Pennsylvania, it's more influenced by New York than Philly. Because Philly got, they, they real regional over there. Like, you're right. from Philly, they ain't rocking with you like that. They talk a certain way, they dress a certain way. It's like Philly, you could spot a Philly person a mile away. Mm, so man. Allentown is more, it's a lot of people in Allentown that's from New York, from Jersey. You know what I mean? So like that's uh, that's where a lot of the influence came from. So is the hip-hop scene more of a New York-looking hip-hop scene than a Philly scene? Because I was going to ask, because when you look at it on the map, it's like Philly is closer. But I know how yeah. Philly get down, too. And like you said, Philly's very kind of like cultish with their rap scene. And yeah. it's like, no, no, no. You got to be from Philly, Philly. Yeah, they rap a certain way. So it's like when I when I when I go out and I do shows and stuff, I get way more love when I go to New York than when I go to Philly. That's exactly what mm-hmm. I was gonna Philly, ask. If you not if you not you know if you ain't already on the radio or whatever, they like you know what I mean they probably already look at Allentown as like the step under them anyway because right it's Philly, Pittsburgh, and then, then Allentown, Allentown. Like the three largest. Yeah, Allentown's third. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Pennsylvania, a big state too. Oh, no, yeah. so I tell you, Red. My family is from Youngstown, Ohio, but I got family that's from Newcastle oh, okay. on the other side. Yeah, that's so, all over about Pittsburgh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Newcastle about thirty minutes from Pittsburgh. I got people from Warren too. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So tell me what the hip hop scene looks like there. I think you kind of described it for us. So it's more of a New York based hip hop scene than a Philly based hip hop scene. Is pretty much what you're telling me. Yeah, it's more, um, way more New York influence. Um, you know, we just. When you hear you just jump on 78 and you just go straight and you write, you go right through the Holland Tunnel or Lincoln, whatever you do, and you right there in the city. Like, I'm, now, I'm in, honestly, I'm in New York like three times a week. Uh, like my second home, yeah. So you spend more time in the NY than you do in Philly about the love. Yeah, I'll probably go to Philly once a month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, Allentown's kind of famous. I see you got some basketball jerseys hanging up, but, like, the most people that came oh, yeah. out of Allentown are actually some football players, like, most notably, like, Andre Reed from the Buffalo Bills and Ed McCaffrey. Oh, yeah, Andre Reed. Yeah. And it's crazy because, you know, Benny and all of them, they rock with, uh, with Andre Reed. Mm. And he That's why I was bringing that up, because Andre <laughs> Reed is from your hometown. Right. Yeah. And I was over there when I went. This is my first time going to Buffalo. I was like, damn, they got a little section called Allentown in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. For Andre. So it was like a lot of like weird little parallel connections and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's wild. No, I was but looking yeah, at um, that, too. Yeah, we also got uh, Larry Holmes from out here. He's from Easton. But Easton, see, this area is, is like a... Isn't Easton like a little west of, the, of y'all or east of y'all? Yeah, but this area, they call it like the Lehigh Valley, right? So it's like... Right. Or some people call it the ABEs, Allentown, Bethlehem, and Easton. And they right. like all like together, kind of. But the like, water separating y'all, kind of, right? No, there's no water. There's no water. Yeah, it's like everything, like a uh, everything within 25 minute drive. Okay. So like you know, a lot of people might live in Allentown or go to, go to work in Easton or uh, live in Easton, work in Bethlehem. You know what I mean? It's like all, it's like all one area, kind of like like if you look at New York, like you got the Bronx, Manhattan. Um, Queens, book like all the the boroughs, it's kind of like that. No, I I got one more Allentown kind of is question, and we're gonna get back to the music. So mm-hmm. I've been hearing about this place named Yoko's. Am I getting that right? Yoko's. Oh, Yoko's. 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 Okay, so I've heard that they make cheesesteaks that are comparable to the Philly cheesesteaks that are made in Philly, and a lot of people in Pennsylvania have mm. seen the echo those sentiments. What say you? I don't know. I don't know what people you spoke to from Pennsylvania, but um, I don't think people really feel like that about y'all. Okay. They're more known for their hot dogs. 
Yeah, it's a hot dog place, but I've heard that the cheesesteaks they do are Philly comparable from some of the people that have passed through. That's just, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he like, that's out of town stuff. Here, yeah, it's different. He's like, right, he's like those are out of towners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about you and like your career. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and what your first big break was and like really just who influenced you to start being an artist and a producer. Because, you know, I know you have an album as well that you dropped last year that we're going to talk yeah. about. Uh-huh. I mean, I started, like, you know, starting off, inspiration was always family first. I got a lot of cousins, brothers that we all did music together. You know what I mean? Um, we used to do our raps together, record record stuff on the computer, and listen to it. You know what I mean? We we thinking, like, we killing it, but we wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> and, then, um, <laughs> and then I gravitated towards, like, the producer rappers. Like RZA, Kanye West, Dr. Dre, you know, all them type of people, I, I, I gravitated towards them um, because I always, you know, it's common interest. Like, I feel like a lot of producers, like, we, we think, like, on the same on the same frequency for some reason. I don't know. I don't know why or, like, why it's like that, but I feel like we got a lot of the same personality um, traits and things like that, like a lot of producers. Like, if I'm in a room and it's, like, a lot of rappers and producers, I'll be able to speak more to the producers than the rappers sometimes. Because we just, you know, we just start getting all technical, talking about what equipment. Like, even when I was, like, when I went to Buffalo, I was talking to, like, all the producers that was there. We all, you know, sharing little knowledge about yeah. stuff that we use to make beats and all that. It's like, there's always a, a conversation all the time. Like, what you use? What you make beats with? One of the things that I found so fascinating about your catalog and why I wanted to talk to you is, is that you have like you have a very diverse and interesting uh, list of credits of artists, mm -hmm. especially for somebody that is so close to Philly and close to New York. Like you've worked with, you know, obviously the Coke Boys is some of your most notable work, but you work with mm -hmm. Petey Crack from Philly. You work with mm -hmm. Lil Flip from Texas. Yeah. You got a record with Max B. Yeah. <laughs> and I might have one uh, coming soon. Can't talk about that just yet, but yeah, I did. I did a couple records. Um, I right, so when Max B was in there, he did a mixtape. Mm -hmm. It was called um, "Return of the Wave." Yeah, mm -hmm. and he did it with uh, I think DJ Padrino. They hit me up, and it was like, "Yo, um, you want to do these records for Max or whatever?" Like it's crazy. I, I never really knew Max before he went to jail. Like, when I met French and all of them, um, Max was already locked up. Oh, okay. But, like, I spoke I spoke to, like, the, like I know Todd Black. Shout out my, my bro, Todd Black. He plugged me in with a, um, a lot of stuff with Max. I used to deal with somebody else that managed him. Like, he had... I had, I even, like, sent him some the bread on the bus. Like, he, he did drops for me. Like, you know, all type of stuff. It was a relationship. Like, we never met, but it was, like... It was healthy. You know, I'm, I'm a fan before a lot of stuff. And, like, Max is an artist that, like, I'm really a fan of, like. Like, no, you know, I, some people just want to work with somebody because of the name and all that. But, like, like now I'm really, I'm really listening to his music before he went to jail. Yeah. Right. Max is that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, um, so d do this for me. Like, <clears throat> talk to our audience. Like, look at it like you have an aspiring producer. What did you do to get your foot through the door with these notable, notable people, though? Like, was it just literally them. pounding the pavement, sending people beats, going to studios, going to shows, going to sessions? Like, how did you make That's these plugs connect? connect? That's a real big part of it. Like, I always tell people, man, you, it's hard to, it can happen, but it's real hard to just be in the house and do it. So, like, I always, anytime it's events going on, I'm, I'm showing up, I'm there. Anytime it's uh, any little small little opportunity, somebody shooting a video, um, Anything like, and I don't try to talk to the rapper. A lot of producers got to know that. Like, don't go after the rapper when you when you meet these people. I like the management because they the ones that the man the rapper ain't trying. Like, they'll act cool with you and all that, but they they too busy. They got so much stuff going on. Yeah, I always holler at the manager, and me and the manager build a relationship, and that's how it. That's how a lot of stuff wound up happening. Like, it's a couple times where I hit the artist directly. Like, I, I remember um. Lil Flip had a show in Allentown, and I had him on Instagram, 
And I was like, yo, I really want to work with you. I couldn't make it to the show. But you know what I mean? If you got an email, I want to send you some records. So I was a fan of him when I was a kid, when he used to be having, you know, all them big records. Yeah. And he happened to give me his email. I sent him the records. And I did, I think I did two or three joints on his album. The next album he did after that. The intro and everything. He shot a video. So, um, it's the networking is the key. Like, a lot of people, they just think somebody's going to come knocking on your door. Or they're going to find you on, online. Like, it's possible to go viral, but that that's... You might as well get you a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's a long shot. Yeah. Even that takes wow. consistency, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you did a record or two for Kanye West. One of them is called Playing in the Clouds, and he was actually playing that at listening sessions around 2013, 2014. Tell me how you rose all the way up to the top of the food chain because for a producer <laughs> in this era or an artist in this era he would be the top of the food chain so tell me how that all came it together for the you top of my list like he kanye probably my biggest inspiration out of everybody okay so for that to happen Easy. it was like my head was like <laughs> but um even like all right so what happened i gave a bunch of records to french when i was in the studio when we was at daddy's house that's the studio um diddy used to have in manhattan I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember I was sitting in there with him with Big Mike, and he was recording Mac and Cheese 3, and I was in there from, like, 12 to, like, 6 in the morning. So I wanted to play beats, but I'm like, man, he ain't got time. So it's, like, 6 o'clock roll around. It's daylight. I'm like, man, let's pack it up. Because he's going to be, I know he's going to be, like, he's tired probably. So we right. getting up like this, pulling the laptop up. French like, oh, no, no, hold on, hold on. So he come out, I just dumped like 80 beats on his laptop. Every beat I had in the computer, I just gave them to him. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I'm looking at having. So, um, right. apparently, you know, he started dating Chloe. Mm -hmm. And Kanye, of course, he was with Kim. And I guess they got some, you know, some instance happened where they chilling or whatever. And you play the beat. That's better. That's better than going viral, my G. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, having Kanye rap on the beat, like even if, even though the record wound up not coming out, and it's partially my fault. Um, just knowing that Kanye liked something that I created and rapped on it was like, that's like that's bigger than all the other stuff I did. You know what I mean? Mm. At the time, at least. You've done some other big things. You were talking about uh, reaching out to Lil Flip when he was in Allentown. You just mm -hmm. opened for Ja Rule and Ashanti last year in Allentown too, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the music fest. What was that like? And did you get to meet them, break bread with them? And what was that experience like? Yeah, we chopped it up. Um, it was like it was like almost eight thousand people there. It was a nice um, a nice event. Like music fest is one of the biggest music festivals in the world. Mm -hmm. It's like seven days long, if I'm not mistaken. And for out here, it's like a real big deal. Like it's they have every genre of music you could think of. People walking down the street. It's like small stages set up. And then they got the big stage, and that's that's what we was performing at, the big stage. But it's crazy, because I used to always perform on one of them little small stages. And then we worked our way up and got up on the big stage. And, like, that's never been done with any artists from my... Usually, like, when big artists come like that, it was no uh, artist, you know, from the area that was performing and opening up. So it was a big deal. Like, they had me on the news, everything. Like Wow. I know. I found the news clip, and that's how I found out it happened. I actually, it's <laughs> not anywhere except on the local news channel. Mm -hmm. You got to go to your local news network in Allentown to find out that you actually did that. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I upload it on my YouTube, man. Oh, I mean, not, not your stuff. I'm talking about stuff that like out there for the people. I mean, I get that. If we following you, we're going to know it. But I mean, just for the casual person that may want to oh, yeah. like, look you up like and, and looking for information. Like, I'm mm -hmm. a journalist, so I look at it differently. It's like I, don't, I try not to go to your stuff to find out stuff about you because that's stuff everybody else already knows. Uh, okay, okay, gotcha. Right. So I want the stuff that's a little bit harder to find. Like, you know, you opening up for Ja Rule and Ashanti and your local, yeah. uh, local media being the only people mm -hmm. that really covered it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I'm, hope, I'm hoping we come back this year, too. That'd be dope. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about the project you dropped last October called Life is Crazy. Tell, tell people about the project. Tell them who you are stylistically as an artist and producer. I know you brought up, like, Dre and RZA yeah. and Kanye and Kanye being your biggest inspiration. But talk to mm -hmm. us a little bit about this project and uh, talk to us about your style as a producer slash artist. Yeah, so my um, I try to come at from an angle of 
the way how I'm talking to y'all right now, like that's the way how I'm talking on the music. That's the way how I talk to people in person that know me. Like I'm always just, I'm just red. I don't gotta put the persona on. I don't gotta put the mask on and act like this character or that. It's like everything. Everybody know like I'm a hundred percent the same way at all times. So I translate that into my music. Like I'm not, I'm not only a drill rapper, or only a trap rapper, or only a boom bap art. Like I be sometimes I feel like rapping on some drill shit. Sometimes I feel like rapping on a a, a sample hip hop beat or a trap beat. It just depends on what, what mood I'm in because I'm into a lot of stuff and like I know a lot of different type of people. I don't been in, I don't I don't been locked up and then I don't been in college prep classes like in school and then I don't been <laughs> you know what I mean like I don't I just I don't grew up with people that was killers I grew up with people that own uh, big companies you know what I mean my mom moved mm-hmm. around a lot when I was a kid so I just I always just been a, around a lot too. so all of that. I'm saying that to say that it all translates into my music. That it's uh, it's just all these different sounds that just come together. It don't. It's not like one lane that I'm in. Like you know, certain artists you listen to them, and like you know what you're gonna get from them. They're gonna give you the same type of sound. Like you might have a boom bap rap. You know what that album gonna sound like, kind of. No, no, like you're a right. Trap rapper from the south or whatever. You know what his album gonna sound like. Mm-hmm. But like with me, I feel like. You don't know where I'm gonna come from with it, and I and, and I feel like I could rap on any type of beat. Also, now probably had got a lot to do with me being a producer. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you bring that up because one of the things that I kind of noticed about your project, I think your project is actually a reflection of the area that you come up. You come from a little funky town that does a lot of different things, mm-hmm. and I think you're a reflection of the town. Like your your town has a car museum, but it's also known <laughs> for making beer, but it also yeah. produces football players. But yep. it also is is known it's for Mac pot, trucks being stuff. there, right? Yep. So you come from kind of like a melting pot area, and so I was really getting the vibe of your area from the diversity of the project. Like it's a diverse and rugged city, and the project kind of mm-hmm. came off to me that way. And that's why I call it life is crazy. Mm. I can see that. That's life. Like is, you never know what 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 uh, angle you're gonna be at in it. You know what I mean? So my life definitely crazy. <laughs> I, got, I got a couple more questions for you and then we're going to let you get out of here first of all I want you to uh, tell us who is somebody who we don't know and I ask everybody this before I get them out of here I want to know who is around you or even from your hometown who we don't know about that we need to start checking for next um shoot I got the Take Flight Society team like you go anywhere from Red Ref Kennedy Dot Mooley you know what I mean like I off the team we got that's growing, it's a lot of good artists. Like if you if you you know you keep up with what we doing and stuff, it's, it's a lot of and like they don't rap like me. Everybody got their own sound. Like we got L. A. Jealous, Macville, uh, Doc Mooley, and Vera as like the the next artist that's about to drop records and stuff. But none of them sound the same. Okay, so that's why I say. And I'm assuming though, those are the things and the people that you're working on next. Because my next question is, what's next for you? Yeah, I'm gonna be producing them. Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm working. Well, I'm working on a, a project with my boy Emizi. He produced a lot of records for me. Okay. Um, actually, Emizi just sent me two records last night, so I'm about to get those done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop like a little EP for the summertime to heat things up. And I did a test. I, I had my birthday bash last weekend. I played one of the records in the club, like nobody heard the record, and you gotta see how everybody was going. So I'm like, yeah, we on to something right now. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, so Jason Sweets, your cousin, is that your fam? Yeah, Jay Sweet, that's my cousin. <laughs> yeah, so so Cuz has been telling me about you for a minute, and Cuz he's one of my know. inspirations starting rapping. Like he, oh, Jay Sweet's been nice his whole life. Mm. You can rap, oh really? <laughs> yeah. I talk to Jay regularly, like on Twitter and like behind the scenes. He's one of the people like I actually keep one of the few people I keep in contact with, like if he hits me. And Mm -hmm. so me and him have just been having conversations behind the scenes for a while. And so like when I finally started behind the scenes for me. Mm -hmm. No, I can see he been plugging he been plugging me and he's like, You need to interview my cousin Coop. I was like, I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, yo, I was like, what else he got? Send me some stuff. Then he sent me like the Shine record, the Max B record. And when I mean he sent me stuff, fam, and this is what I mean about having good people behind you. I mean, mm-hmm. when I mean I told fam to send me stuff, 
I mean, I put the phone down for two minutes. I came back to like 12 tracks. <laughs> and then like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, no, nah, listen to Cuz, cool. Uh-huh. Now, um, last question before we get out of here, because I see the Jordan and the Kobe jerseys hanging up. Are you a yeah, 76 and I got the, I got the Jordan. No, I got the Jordan, Kobe, and I got the LeBron. It's over there. Yeah, there it okay. is. Okay. Because, you know, so, this is why I always tell people when they come to Miles, this is the errors. Like, Jordan had the 90s, Kobe had the 2000s, and LeBron got the 2010s. Now, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting LeBron. I've had a couple of run-ins with Michael Jordan that were pretty epic. Mm -hmm. I had some run-ins with Kobe. I used to live in Southern California when I was younger. Oh, okay. I had a couple of run-ins with Kobe when we were both younger that didn't go so well. They were both pretty (laughs) epic guys. Are you a 76ers fan or a Knicks fan? Uh, I'm a Lakers fan. There it is. <laughs> How you gonna be from PA in between NY? How you gonna be in between NY and Philly and be a Lakers fan? How did that happen? You know Kobe why? got you like that? Is it Kobe because of Lower Marion? Yeah, but I'm 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 a real big LeBron fan. Like when he was in the Cavs, I like the Cavs. Okay. But I like Kobe too though. But okay. um, I always I'm a, I'm a Lakers and a Raiders fan, and then neither one of them teams is over there. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So I always got to be up late watching my team play. Especially in Lakers game. Lakers games don't end till one, fam. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, we appreciate so, you coming out, man. Let the people know, like, where they can hit you, where they can tag you. And I'm assuming, like, all of your social media platforms is pretty much Redneck Fly because it's pretty original as far as Twitter, IG. Yeah. Uh-huh. Where, where are your beats at? Is there anywhere where, like, a local artist can come source out your beats and holler at you if somebody who's watching us is like, yo, I want to hear what fam got and pull up on them. Is there somewhere they can get your beats from? Well, I got the, I got a Beat Stars page. I recently took it down. Because I've been getting I've been getting hit up to do so much custom work for artists that like I haven't really been able to cater to that that website, but I think I'm gonna put it back up soon. But I'm gonna those first world problems. problems. Yeah, but honestly, I would like I like to work. Like if, let's say an artist hit me up, I like to do stuff specifically for him. You know what I mean? I don't want to just have a bunch of beats and then they just rap on. Like I want to mm. I'll be I'm more so like yo, let's work. Like if an artist wanna um want to hit me up and he wanna get together, like let's 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 work from scratch. Yeah. What's the green you know, I I um, Y'all in Atlanta, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, I was just down there working with my boy uh Chaotic three oh five. He down there. I'm coming back down there. We got some, we got some fire on the way too. Holla, hey, holla at me. I'd love to pull up in the yo. Me and Mike yeah. we just did a cipher. You might get some bars out of me. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm gonna have to let y'all know when we when we pull up again. No, no, no. Let me know for real. I'm all about. I love. I love the yo, man. That's like my sanctuary. It has been most of my adult life, even when I wasn't rapping anymore. So yeah, let me know. We'll pull up on okay, you. Okay, but all right. Yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Right, yeah, so Thank you know, for, like, artists, whatever y'all want to work, hit me on Instagram at Red McFly. That's my biggest platform that I use the most. Well, you know what? You saying that maybe ask want to ask you one more question, then I promise I'm going to let mm-hmm. you go. Dream collaboration right now. You saying you want to cook up live with somebody. Who would be the one person you haven't worked with left that you want to sit down and really cook up with? See, the thing is, the Kanye record, I didn't really get to sit in the studio with him. Mm, still so, yeah. like, I really want to sit in the studio with Ye. Yeah. I could get Ye or, you know, anyone in big artist. But if you think about, like, you know, artists that's probably... I don't know. I really want to work with Ye, Drake. Of course, everybody want to work with Ho if he still want rap. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> right. and I did some records with, with Benny and them, but I, I still want to work with the other members of Griselda. I'm a <laughs> um, you know, I'm a fan first. Me and too. Uh, yeah, any anybody that that's on that level of uh, being creative, that's who I want to work with. Like not people that just go in there like this is a check. Right. I'm just. Right. Put something together, throw it on. Like I like people that actually take this as a uh, as a craft, a craft and, and an art form. You know what I mean? Those are people I want to work with. Okay. Mhm. So appreciate you coming on with us, Red Man. I appreciate you having me on. No, no, no. We appreciate you coming through, man. We appreciate the love. Definitely holler at us when you get to the A. For sure. Yeah, For it's gonna be sooner than later because we already talking about pulling up like in the next uh, couple weeks. Okay. Go I mean, Lakers. everybody pull up down here all the time. You know what I mean? That's why I just be like, mm-hmm. oh, let me when you're in the city. We'll put it together. You know definitely. I'm going to hit you. All right, man. All right, appreciate, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, fam. All right. Appreciate yes, y'all. All right. Later. All right. 
Yeah, that was dope, man. Fox it was. Red, man. It was a dope. I like talking to him. Yeah, yeah, talking music. Yo, before, right before the interview started, uh, I think it was Just Pearly Things said something about me not liking Eminem because of the color of his skin. Anyway, I asked the people who Just Pearly Things is, and she's a YouTuber with like, you know, 1.3 million subscribers or something. Look, I want to make something clear, man. Like, who got 1.3 million subscribers? <laughs> the person that just called me a racist. Anyway. Who is that? No, the, what's the person's name? Uh, just probably things. But no, it was a constructive conversation. Um, I just want to say this, though. Any of my critiques of Eminem have nothing to do with anything like that. I was just talking to some of my people today about the fact that the Beastie Boys don't get enough props. I would love to come on whoever's platform. She can come on this platform. And we can talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I'm saying is strictly music based anybody who listens to our show knows that give me the records you know what i'm saying and i say that uh eminem in my opinion is overrated because you know the music's just not where other people's music is i mean the people wake up in the morning and and press play and say they want to hear guess who's back back again uh, i don't think so i don't know not for me but sabotage uh no sleep to brooklyn you know what i'm saying uh hold it now I think the Beastie Boys don't get enough credit. I don't think the Beastie Boys get enough credit for what they've done for hip hop in general. And I don't think they get enough credit for what they've done for the whole rock rap genre that people like, you know, Rage Against the Machine, Kid Rock, Limp Biscuit were able to benefit off of. But again, I would love to have those further discussions for anybody who thinks that. Yeah, no, my sentiments no, no, no. are coming I'm, from I'm, another I'm place. I'm going through just, just Especially another YouTuber, page. you know what I mean? Especially another YouTuber, because, you know, it's all about dialogue here. That's what we do. Let no, me no, no, through... I'm, I'm going through the things that she does right now. And I say this to you respectfully because I like that you do. I'm looking at what you do. <laughs> you don't want this smoke. You don't want to debate me, sweetie. Like these people that you're debating with, they not me. You better stop that. Watch your tone. Slow down. Speak a little bit more respectfully when you're speaking and using the R word on here. You know what I'm saying? Because what we have to deal with as blacks in America on a day to day basis, even still here in 2023, what you're not about to do as a white woman and pull up here and slander us by slinging the R word around. You need to be checking your own people. You need to be checking your own podcast. You need to be checking your own community first. The systemic and the institutional racism that exists within this country is laughable. It's egregious, and we are literally the laughing stock to every other major country in the world right now. So why don't you handle the racists on your side, and I'm going to take care of Mike B. And whenever you want to come up in here and get that ass smoked, you can. But don't you ever sit up here and call us racist again. No, nah, I mean, we could, like together. I said, we could talk about the Eminem thing. That's what I Get your shit about. together, just early <laughs> things. I don't care if you got 1.5 followers or 1.45 million. What you're not about to do is use the racist word, and what you're not about to do is want it with me. I will undress you and break you down systemically and institutionally like the racism that your forefathers created. In scenes. Jason Sweet with the Super Chat says, Thanks, Mike D. And Coop. Uh, for having my cousin on here, Jay Sweet. Uh, I'm sorry, Jay Sweets, hype Jay man Sweet slash rapper. Uh, Red, what up, cousin? Take flight, sir. Let's see. Uh, Jermaine Johnson with the super chat says, "Coop is uh, is from where? I'm sorry. Coop is from everywhere and knows everybody." <laughs> Let's I see. do. I've been everywhere. I told you my nickname down at the airport used to be "Been Around the World." I I I. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay Short with the Super Chat says, uh, being from Allentown and influenced by NYC, does does he feel the pressure to produce a certain sound? Or does he feel, uh, or does he just create? Sounds like he just creates just based on the conversation think, that you I just I think had. the whole thing about gravitating towards New York is what enables him to create because he's kind of saying, he's like, no, Philly got a sound and a style and I'm not trying to do that per se. So Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Philly does I mean, to be have a very you, distinct Like, and when you're style. talking about that Philly sound, he's right. Because to be honest with you, like, Thought's the last guy that got in. Everybody else, like, it's like Thought was in there before everybody and great before everybody. But everybody after Bean seems like it's a certain type of thing in a certain type of way. Don't it seem that way? Right. No, right. I agree. Um, where we at? 
On the oh, uh -huh. we're on Seagull. Oh, no, we're staying. We're staying. We're staying in PA, Mike, because it's Beans. Yeah, we staying in Philly. Yeah, we staying in Philly. Where's Where's uh, Beans at at this point? Uh, he's still on Talib. Career longevity quality. That's Talib. Yep. Oh, never mind. Beans is already done with him. You're right. Beans is moving on. Sorry, Guru. Hmm. Okay. Impact. This is interesting. Impact's Guru. The guru. Live performance, Guru. Guru. Lyrics is Beans, Mike. I think so too. Storytelling might be Beans too. I Even with just to get a rep. I think storytelling you know, is being. Classic albums, it's Guru. Huh. Yeah, it is. The gang starts shit too heavy, Mike. I mean, even his stuff, the, the Jasmine the Jasmine Taz shit, stuff yeah. Fire. Jasmine Taz Volume yeah. 2 is dope. Real yeah. dope. Yeah. Classic songs, that's, that's Guru. Yep. Longevity of albums. Hmm, I think that's Guru. Yeah. Longevity of songs. I think that's Guru. I think Beans has met his match. Yeah, Guru got Beans. That gangstar shit ain't no joke. <laughs> <laughs> it it makes me want to put a star by Guru, Mike. Actually, the fact that he beat Beans yeah. like that. That's what I'm saying. You beat somebody like Beans like that, it's like we need to put a star by Guru like we did for T.I. and pull him back out. Mm -hmm. So, Mike. <clears throat> How many people are we in now? We have 49 people in, so we need to do 50. 50. Yeah. 50. I was going to say Doom, uh, Yasin, or Foxy, but no. 50 has no. to. We need 50. 50 for 50. We need 50 for 50. We got to call 50 to the carpet. Just pro Man, things. I know you're a 50 Cent fan, too. You got to be able to join us in this. You know, people People don't understand. It's like, I'm actually a big fan of 50's music. You know what I'm saying? 50 the truth. I'm a big uh -huh. fan of 50, period. Like, the the music, see, see, hold the up, person. Hold up. Let's back it up. Let's back, it up. <laughs> <laughs> back it up. Back it up. I'm going to say this again. I said, I'm a fan of the music. You I'm a I'm fan saying? of the person. Like, like, Hip hop needs now, a villain. Hip hop needs a no, villain. No, that's what I, I mean. Okay, so that's what I mean. Is it's like, he's not a villain to me. So it's like, you know what I mean? I get what you're saying, but it's like some of the is. stuff become, some of the stuff just be coming off as corny to me. I'm just going to call a spade a spade. It's like some of it, like, you know, some of the stuff he does, it's hilarious, Mike. And it's too hilarious for him to play the villain. You yeah. know what I mean? No, so I it's hear more that. Comedic. So <laughs> hold on. So it's more comedic and in jest. And it's like, well, I don't take comedians too seriously, fam. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I love his business moves. I love his music. But if you talking like the guy and like how the guy move, it's like no, I'm not a fan of that. And it's like I haven't hit that. You know I was mean? just uh, I was a brilliant just, guy though. He's a brilliant guy. Brilliant. I saw an interview that he did uh, on Mary J. Blige's show, The Wind Down or whatnot. And I'm always entertained by Fifty Cent's interviews. Mm -hmm. I mean, because no, he's, he's great. I feel like I learned. I, and real talk, I feel like I learned something whenever I hear Fifty uh, do an interview, like. He said something that I didn't even know in this Mary interview. He said that, uh, you know, his relationship with Bad Boy and just getting connected with uh, Puff. He said Jennifer Lopez hooked that up. Because they, you know, she had the same executive producer as him, you know, when she was on Sony. He was on Columbia. And J-Lo right. was like, yo, man, you need to work with this guy. That's how that happened. I was like, I never knew that. Well, he had a record with J-Lo, and they took him off of it and put Nas on instead. That's part of where the rift between them happened. So all of that's real. Yeah, I remember that. All right. Mm -hmm. um, do you think he starts with Freddie or? Hell no. 50 starting with Eminem at 36, Mike. Okay. And then <laughs> we'll go from there. <laughs> Impact. That's Eminem. It is. You heard Five me, y'all. That's Eminem, right? Okay. Tell Clutch, tell Clutch the pearls in her podcast that we put Eminem's impact over 50. Live okay. performance. That's 50. That's, I think that might be Eminem. Okay. I'm cool with that. With the chainsaw and the Jason mask. Now, I will give Eminem from Up and Smoke Tour credit. He's a great performer. That's fair. Lyrics is Eminem and so is Storytelling. Yep. Classic albums. That's 50. That's 50. Classic songs is 50. That's 50, yep. I don't care what y'all say. Get Richard Dice Ryan's not dated. But Ooh. longevity of albums. Who says that? 
plenty of people be saying that. That's still him, though. You think so? Because the Slim Shady LP, the Marshall Mathers LP, and the Eminem show are all before Get Rich or Die Trying. You said I, you the know Eminem what? show was I, I will give you that. I think the Eminem show is probably aged the best of the three. Uh, I do like some points on the Slim Shady LP, even though I don't listen to it. But that that album kind of sounds, you know, dated. But, you know, it's 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 cool. I, I'll give that to him because of the Eminem show, specifically. Yeah. Marshall Mathers LP too. Yeah, well, it has its songs moments. Is fifty. Cause fifty songs holding. I don't care what you say. Goop, goop, oh, yeah, goop. Yeah, yeah. Classic collaborations. That's fifty. Yeah, it is. Career longevity quality. That's him. Yeah, that's him. And we tied. Hold on. And if it comes down to the voice, I got fifty. No, no, M just beat him okay. on the longevity. That's fair. That's fair. So, so we're going to take Guru, him up a notch? Yeah, Guru is right between Eminem and 50 right now. You want to see if he beats Guru? Yeah, let's see. Impact? 50. Live performance? 50. Lyrics? Guru. Storytelling? I don't know, man. That might be 50, man. Many men... Is Put that up in the chat, right? All right. Classic albums. I've been in this position before. That's Guru. Grandma Crib. Niggas outside of my door. Classic songs is 50. Yeah. Longevity of albums is Guru. Longevity of songs might be 50, Mike. Because how mm. much gang star stuff do you hear outside of Mass Appeal? Hmm, I don't know, man. I don't just know. Just tell me, just tell, just tell me what Gangstar and Guru Records still getting played like that, and I'll give it up. I'm, I, I know I'm still playing the mic. Yeah, I yeah. play you on my steez every week. I play, you know, royalty you know and um, but still, Master Pills a big one, and it's very early. It is. But we're saying longevity of songs. That's why I'm saying what other songs, because it's longevity of songs, not song. Like, I still I, hear P.I.M.P. Gonna... get played on the radio, Mike. Okay. In the club, definitely still getting played on the radio. Wankster. Yeah. I told you Hustler's Ambition came on today, Mike. Yeah, Wankster. That ain't even one of the big records. Disco Inferno. I love Candy Disco Shop. Inferno. Magic Stick. I don't know, Mike. These records still be getting played. I, okay. I think that could go 50s way. I get money. He's losing the storytelling, though. He's losing. The people are saying that he's losing the storytelling. I'm cool with that. Uh, people are saying "Moment of Truth," um, uh, "DYWK," um, "Above the Clouds." I don't know. DYW, uh, D, I'm sorry, DWYCK. Is probably, yeah, Dwick is probably the other one that I Dwick was. Don't no, nobody playing Dwick. What? Nice and smooth. Yeah. Gang Star has got to be the shortest. No, no, no. The only, the only thing on that to get played is when Killer Mike and, and, and Run the Jewels took it and did ooh wee wee. You think that gets played? Nah, I'm not gonna do that to Gang Star. But I still, I, I'll take your argument with the um, with the 50 songs though. Classic collaborations. That's 50. That's 50. Career longevity quality. That's that's 50, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. When the guru passed, that was like oh nine or something. I think. Let me make sure. How long was Fifty's career, Mike? Hmm. Gangsta popped up in like eighty eight, eighty nine. No. Fifty ain't had no twenty year rap career. He has the catalog guru. to prove it, honestly, too. Uh, guru. Ooh, guru? Rights, yeah. Yeah, Guru has the longevity, Mike. He had a longer career than Fifty. Not a better one, but a longer one. Because the long, uh, the last Gangstar album that was what, oh three, oh two, something like that. Okay, so the first one's eighty nine though. Yeah, that's so. still fourteen years. Fifteen had no fourteen year career. Okay, he had like a seven year career. Yeah, and he's doing. I mean, he does some dope songs for his television shows, but full albums. Songs ain't stuff. that dope for one. First of all, the songs aren't that dope. <laughs> I like them. Mm. I like them. Um, it's catchy. It's not dope. It's a difference. Uh, I like jingles and shit like everybody else, but that ain't no dope. You, you don't like the theme song, The Power? 
Like I said, I, I, I like the jingles. BMF theme song is hard too, but I'll still give that to Guru. Did he write the hook to the Power theme music? The hook is pretty dope. <laughs> it's still a jingle. He probably did. I know you're not talking about his bar work on the Power soundtrack. We're not doing that, are we? Because then he's going to really be mad when I start talking. I never took nowhere. Life's full of ambitions. twists and turns, bumps and bruises. I lived, I learned. Uh, <laughs> I like the dude to say I cook crack in the microwave. They call me Chef Boyard 50. I don't like that shit, that Power shit. Keep that happy shit. <laughs> that shit's dope, but I'll give it to Guru, though. It's not. Voice. Huh. <sighs> I say, I say, no, you might want to put that up in the chat. Yeah, we got to put that in the chat because people love Guru's voice. I think this is going to be the decider right here. Mm. Yeah, we're popping today. Let's see, 50. Oh, shit. Hold on. My bad. We're popping every day in the streets. Yeah, for real. Um, Mike went on the rap round table, handed out a couple of roasts. <laughs> Put the cycle up, spit some bar work, got red in the cloud today. According to hip hop's on a roll. On right. a roll baby. It's been a good day. Um fifty cent the ice cube. Right. Guru. Boom boom. Who's number three on our list? Jay Short with the super chat says, I uh I don't though. You realize it, Coop, but uh you quote Guru about once a week on here. And E-40 got to be in contention, at least. What Cam done that he hasn't? Hmm. Put 40's name down. Yeah. I told you, just because we're doing the top 50 doesn't mean that everybody that's in here is going to make it in here. I don't think people think, understand how like hip-hop really is 50 years old. Yeah. There's more than 50 great MCs that have lived. Yeah, people are going to get pushed out. It looks like uh, Guru's winning the voice thing, too. Then 50 staying right where he at. Oh, Guru's losing the voice thing? I mean, he's no, winning Guru's the voice thing? No, Guru's winning the voice thing. Oh, the 50 sliding down? Yeah, 50 sliding down. Okay, it's 50 and beans. Impact. This is a good one, actually. 50. Live performance. I get at the 50. Do you? Like I, I said, I've seen Siegel go out there, especially in that back and forth with him Siegel. and Jada. Hmm? I feel you. It's 50. 50 is more big game time show performer. He, yeah. He's done bigger venues and has had the rocket himself. I will give him that. Actually, he's about to do his last tour, too. Shout out to 50 for that. Lyrics is Seagull, so is storytelling. Okay. I love, I love Beans, but classic albums is 50. Mm-hmm. Classic songs is 50. That's 50. Longevity of albums, Beans. <sighs> Beans dropped about five years before fifth. Was it five? I thought Beans dropped in like 99. Uh, yeah. About four or five. That'd yeah. be five years before. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Longevity of songs is 50. Yep. Classic collaborations. That's interesting. It is. I think it's 50, yeah. though. Um, I do, too. Because 50's done things outside of his crew. And really, man, 50 can take over a song with the feature. I'm with that. 50 beats beans. Okay. And I so, think that's fair because of Get Richard Die Trying. Of course. Yeah. Okay, so that's all right. Yep. Yeah. So that's our 50. So you want me to read the 50 out right quick that we have? Yeah, and then we can ride and, out. I mean, right. Well, I mean, I think people want us to pull some people out, too, because they feel like some people aren't getting in. And this is what I mean. If you're not in this list, it's like good luck climbing up it. Um, you know what I'm saying? And I feel sorry for some people going to get kicked out. Like, too short about to kick some people out, probably. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, who else? Who else? Um, who else might kick some people out? Uh you said too short. I think most definitely. Uh, but we ain't Yassin. did Yasin. I mean, we ain't yeah. did Yasin. Yasin gonna kick some people out. And I'm gonna be fair. I think Jeezy too. I think Foxy you, possibly as well. I don't know, Mike. I don't know about Fox. You know how I, I feel about know. Fox, but I don't know. All right, let's go through the top fifty right quick. Okay. See where we at. All right. One is Nas. Two is Jay. Hold on, hold. Three is gonna knock some people out too. 
Huh? I said Doom's gonna knock some people out too. If you say so. Nas one, Jay Z two, Ice Cube three, Tupac four, Rock M five, Biggie six, Snoop seven, Chuck B eight, KRS one nine, LL ten. Next ten, Slick Rick at eleven, Scarface at twelve, Ghostface at thirteen, Raekwon at fourteen, Common at fifteen, Kane at sixteen, DMX at seventeen, Kanye at eighteen, Drake at nineteen, Buster Rhymes at twenty. Next ten's Wayne at twenty one. Lil' Kim at 22, Kendrick at 23, Cool G Rap at 24, Q-Tip at 25, Red Man at 26, Method Man at 27, Black Thought 28, Jada Kiss 29, Big Boy 30. 31 through 40s, Pusha T, J. Cole, Prodigy, Rick Ross, T.I. at 35, Eminem, Guru, 50, Beans, Talib at 40. 41 through 50, Styles, Bun, Cam, Light, Luda, Game, Fab, Nikki, Lupe, Freddy. Freddy. Okay. I like it. I mean, I think that um, it's going to be a little bit more movement, but this is the most complete that we've gotten it so far. I think we got some real progress. We were able to dedicate a whole show to it, pretty much. So, here, so before we go, are you about ready? Do you think there's anything else we need to cover? I feel like we've... Well... I do want to, I mean, I ain't going to get too deep into it, but pause. Oh, yeah. But, you know, Hold on. Uh, MGK dissed Jack Harlow, and I think Jack Harlow has to respond. That's just, you know, that's all I'm going to say. So explain <laughs> to me real quick what happened. You know, was... Well, MGK went out there and put on a freestyle or went in the backyard of his friend's house and uh, wrapped up a renegade and was ripping. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and he said something along the lines, and I'm paraphrasing it, he said, I see why they call you Jack, man. Because you took Drake's whole style. Get that man his style back, man. Or something like that. And he was just going in on him real quick. Uh, and and I, I'm sure it's a response to Harlow saying that he's the second hardest white rapper since, you know, M. So, MGK has something to say about that. And I think that on the path that Jack Harlow claims to be on, this is a great opportunity for him. If you are what you say you are and what they built you to be, go at MGK. I don't know how well that worked for Eminem, but try it. You got to at this point. It's the thing, man. Like, if I said I'm the hardest rapper out of Atlanta since Outkast or something, and somebody jumps up and says, nah, nigga, and calls me out, I got to respond. Right? <laughs> I mean, you don't have to respond. We're just going to talk about you in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Uh, none of those claims are even valid if he doesn't respond. And, you know, and again, and, and shout out to Just Pearly Things. We still haven't forgotten that it's been a whole year and two months and the Black Slim Shady hasn't been responded to. Never forget that either. Is there anybody that you <laughs> want to pull out and maybe potentially <laughs> try to move up? Like, who, who are like, you thinking? I know a lot of people, like a lot of people are unhappy with Kendrick at 23. And Let's do Eminem it. Let's pull 36. Kendrick out. Let's pull Kendrick out and see if he can get lower. Okay. Get low. Kendrick Let's, can all um, time great. How about this? Let's just take him up two spots and put him up against Wayne. Okay. Impact, Wayne or Kendrick? Wayne. Right. Live performance, Wayne or Kendrick? That's interesting. Because um, Wayne gives a great live show. Wayne does give a great live show, but I will say Kendrick has all these bells and whistles. He has the, uh, uh, right now, he has the uh, highest grossing hip hop tour of all time. So I would have to give him to, them, to him. Yes. We're judging GOAT status by tour gross revenue. Now, lyrics. I think that's Kendrick. Storytelling. I think that's Kendrick. Classic albums. I think that's Kendrick, too. Classic songs. I think I that's, think that's Wayne. Wayne. definitely. Longevity of albums. Say less. Yeah, that's, that's Wayne. Wayne. Wayne's going to get all the longevity things. Longevity of songs? Yes. Weezy F. Yeah. Classic collaborations. Once that's again. Wayne. Yeah. That's Wayne. You see how you can be the best storyteller, the best lyricist, and make the best albums and lose? 
you know, Kendrick has... And be a better live performer. Think about it. Better lyricist, better live performer, better storyteller, better album maker. How you doing overall? How you shit holding? You know what's interesting, bro? Like, Kendrick wins all the stuff that Eminem wins. They're very Career similar long- in that way. Look, look, watch this. Career longevity quality. Oh, that's one right. of them took a five-year break. Before the other one, the one that the one of them been here since we was kids, Mike, and they never took a five never year stop. break. Yeah, can't stop, won't stop. And that's how that goes. Okay, Wayne won. That, we didn't right? even get the voice. We didn't even get the voice. So it's like, you want me to put him up against Kim, who's right between the two? Sure. Maybe we need to move Wayne up. Is what I thought. Possibly, I think we. Wayne's at. Wayne's at 21, you know what I'm saying? Because I was trying to figure out why Drake was ahead of Wayne, honestly. Kendrick and Kim, Impact. That's Kim. Live performance. That's Kendrick. Okay, lyrics is Kendrick. Yep. Storytelling, Kendrick. Classic yep. albums, Kendrick. Yep. Classic songs are Kim. Yeah. True. Longevity of albums. Can I interest you in hardcore in 1996? It's true. It's true. Longevity of songs. That's Kim. Can I introduce you to Players Anthem? Yeah. No time. Crush on you. No. That's Class, classic All collaborations. Classic collaborations, Mike. That's once Kim. again. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Stop acting like this man untouchable. You feel what I'm saying? No, you're right. Very much can get touched out here. Like I career said, longevity quality. He, he wins Mike, the same long, categories. Mike, career longevity quality. Well, that goes to Kim. Kim got locked up and didn't take this much time off, Mike. Think about that. <laughs> she went to prison and didn't take it this long to make an album. It's true. Mike, guess what? Impact, Kim, classic songs. Kim, longevity of albums. Kim, longevity of songs. Kim, once again, these collaborations. Kim, yeah. five, longevity quality is in. When you take five year breaks, it don't matter how great you are. Kim, that's how Kim and Wayne he got did over it. They, they go to work, too. Mike. Yeah. Tired explaining this. They go to work. That five year break. I, Mike, I'm the main one to say it. No, he's top 10. So long as this next album isn't trash after a five-year break. I said, because if it's not good, he's going to slide and deserve to slide. Because what's holding up so, him up so high are the albums. Yeah. Which means he needs to keep stride. He didn't keep stride. End of discussion. You slide when you don't keep stride. When, when an athlete runs out of gas towards the end, they don't give them the old first place ribbon that they had before. They give them the new ribbon finally placed. You placed in six last time. You're not a gold medalist anymore. But go, <laughs> but go get your ass back in shape and run the race again. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, for the people in the chat saying that Cali is regional, it's 40 plus million people out here and we are the fifth largest economy in the world. <laughs> Shout out to Cali. You know what, man? For the first time possibly ever, I think I'm rooting for the Lakers. You know what, Mike? <clears throat> I'd just like to say that I believe that somebody said that Philly was going to the finals, Mike. You said that. It ain't happening yet now. I said it before now. the playoff starts. I don't know. I said man. it before the playoff started, Mike. Y'all got a Jimmy Butler problem. No, 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 no. We don't have a Jimmy Butler problem. Miami has a Joel Embiid problem. See, you're looking at it the wrong way. There's a hierarchy to this shit. It's like, no, no, no. That Listen. problem is secondary to that 7-2 problem that you have. You have a 7-2 problem. They have a 6-6 problem. The size of the problem is different. One's succinctly better than the other. We're going to see. But, Mike. But here's what I'm really, really counting on. See, this is what I'm saying, Mike. I really counted on the law of averages, and that's how I picked all my picks. Because here's what I know, and I can say this again: No, Embiid done been too hurt, too hurt in the playoffs. It's time for him to play through it. Harden's been too bad in the playoffs. It's time. Like players that are this historically great, Mike, this stuff don't keep happening to them. You don't keep getting injured. You don't keep coming up short. At some point, you stay healthy. At some point, you stay upright and show up and play in big games. Yeah. They're both doing that because the law of averages says that that shit's not going to keep happening to them. Because if so, there's like, you know, my, my family from the country, like somebody putting a root on your ass if you keep struggling like this in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got a piece of your hair and your drawers buried in the backyard about 10 feet from the toilet so you can't go nowhere but the bathroom. Like, so that has to change. The same reason that I, um, 
pick the Phoenix in LA series is because Mike, it's just very, very clear to me that it's like LeBron and KD haven't played since 2018. Usually historically great players as them has in top 15, 10, 15 players. They usually don't go five years without seeing each other in the playoffs in some sort of shape, form or fashion. Mike, it just don't happen. The law averages say they're going to collide again. And so I picked Phoenix, not because I thought Denver was the better team. Or Philly because I thought they were the better team. Or the Lakers because I thought they were the better team. I picked those teams because the law of averages says that things, certain things are going to happen after a course of time. You feel me? That's fair. You know, shout out to Devin Down, man. He said something in the chat. He says he's the biggest Kendrick hater. As the, uh, you know, obviously he would be being, you know, a person named Dumb and Down, right? Um, but he said that <laughs> Kendrick is clearly better than Kim. Which categories would you say that Kendrick deserves yeah. to win over Kim. Which ones do we get inaccurate? See, this is what I'm saying. You can't discount somebody who shows up to work every day. You can't... St- you can't. <clears throat> okay, so look at it like this. If you're from this era and you feel like Kendrick's stuff is holding up masterfully, it is. Listen to what I'm saying. Kim shit's about 20 years before. That shit holding up even better. Well, see, this is you my thing, me? though. If you're from this era... And you know how frequently you still playing, Mike. No, I mean, if you're from this era and you know how frequently artists come out with material, how do you feel about Kendrick taking five years off without making anything? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would imagine someone from this era would feel like, yeah, that's that's not what you're doing. Because even in our era, a five year break was crazy. In today's era, that's insane. People are dropping like two, three albums a year. You know what I'm saying? You understand that the last guy that took a break like this was this great. He changed the whole craft of MCing, and your albums aren't as good as his. Like, I don't care what anybody says. Good Kid, Mad City, Pippa Butterfly, pick up. Ain't none of them paid in full. Lyrically, he ain't never hit Let the Rhythm Hit Him level. Like, he ain't never been on Let the Rhythm Hit Him level lyrically. You feel I mean, me? Listen, never. His situation. He ain't never spent a day in Mike. Mike, he got, Mike, this is what I'm saying. Everybody laud his lyricism. Mike, the zone that Rockham existed in 1991 yeah. on Let the Rhythm Hit Him, this guy has only even ascended to maybe a few times verse wise. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, maybe. Yeah. I, I don't even like the Rockham comparison because Rockham's group broke up, the game totally changed, and nobody that was operating in Rockham's era was even operating anymore. The people that were operating Chris, in Kendrick's Harris, era Harris, were continuously, Harris. well, yeah, him. Of course, he's an anomaly. But you know what I'm saying. Like, as a whole, the game had a whole new look. When K- Kendrick's era was operating the whole time, Cole didn't stop. Drake didn't stop. Wale didn't stop. ASAP didn't stop. Like, so it's None not the same really thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's not the same thing. Like, at least Rakim can say my group broke up and there's a whole new sheriff in town type of thing. But that's not the thing for Kendrick's break. People need to understand this. He literally is losing this race about lack of effort. Like, that's why I'm on it the way that I'm on it. It's like, no, I'm not saying that fam don't got... Mike, in his bag, Mike, He's a top 10 MC. Mm-hmm. The only problem with that bag is, is that everybody ahead of you, well, they've shown that they're that. For durations of times that are longer than yours, mm-hmm. with greater peaks, Mike, more classic songs, more classic hit records, and quite frankly, more personality and appeal. Who out here looking and rapping like Kendrick, really? We never so get this. If you really running it, Mike, what... What? Anybody trying to get Kendrick hairstyle or wear Kendrick's clothes? We you never get the thumbs down until we start getting critical on Kendrick. Uh, Michael Williams at the Super Chat says, if Kendrick was borderline top 10 to you before, Mr. Morale, I don't see how he drops below Kim just because uh, it was a dud. Five years, guys. Like, what? Yeah, okay, I mean, look that, at it like but this. that's the thing, too, the Michael Williams. It's five years out of a... Uh, what is... What would you say his career? If we're going to start things at Five Section 8. out of 10 years, niggas, yeah. I can divide. Yeah. That's one every, let's say, two. two. I, I think we got to be two. fair and we got to start at Section 80 and not overly dedicated, right? So if we're starting at Section 80, what, that's 2011, right? 
So you have 2011 through 2016. That's a five-year window. And then you got a five-year break. So you have a 10-year career with a five-year break. You took a break half of the time when you came back with Mr. Morale. It was lukewarm. So, yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, I can't think of another person that's done something like this. Like, like, we, like I say about Andre, I, I can't think of one rapper who's in these conversations that doesn't have one song by themselves with three verses. I can't think of one rapper that did what Kendrick did in the prime of their career. So this makes a very special case, guys. We can't really compare it to too much. And then he did it in an era where people make music more frequently than ever. Think about this. Look, this is what I'm saying. People trying to treat the five years like it's nothing. No, fam. Like real talk. Tell that the Ice Cube. No, or that's DMX. literally like, guys, let's or look at it in context. That's like if no, Jay Z put out Reasonable Without in 96 and his next album was in 2001. Come on, guys. Really? No, Mike. That's like him, <laughs> actually, if you want to be technical, that's like him taking a break after volume two for five years. Yeah. What's really going to happen? So. Think about where hip hop was in '98, and look at 2003. It's a whole different game. Literally, it really is, man. And I don't see why people don't see that, but maybe they don't want to see that. Well, what I'm saying is, is that some of the things, like <clears throat> when you're a great MC, Mike, the great MCs do all the things. That's why we're able to have a whole station head show. Think about what I'm saying. We're able to have a whole station head on Friday about. Features yeah. that Nas and Jay did, and not stuff that's on their albums, but just stuff they contributed to other people's projects. Not collaborative albums, but stuff that they did for other people's work. Mike, he's never going to have a package like that. Well, I think that's it's one too of late the. For that. I think that's one so of the things stuff, that hurts him like, too. No, his, his feature game is weak. Gonna say it. That's why I was saying some of the stuff I was saying, Mike. No, your voice matters. Stop giving him a pass for voice. I think, you know, his, I think his biggest knock, to be honest, I think the voice is one of the things, but his feature game. And the collabs. Yeah. And, and again, he's doing this in an era that is collaborative heavy. Now, we could say the same thing about the guys in the 80s, but people didn't collab like that back then. Now we're right. in an era where people collab more than ever, and it's not really any excuse to be so, weak with your features, not to mention so you see. said what you said on um on um um on the Big Sean record, you know what I'm saying? Control. Like, yeah, control. Like you said these things. So listen to what I'm about to say. Why people laud him so much, and this is kind of why, like, he's kind of like a, a touchy subject for this list, is because <clears throat> listen to what I'm about to say. Oh, he's not as agile and versatile as y'all are thinking he is. Is really what I'm trying to tell you. Because truthfully, the stuff that he wins on, listen. He wins on live performance, mm -hmm. lyrics, storytelling, and classic albums. You feel me? Yeah. Specifically. Mike, he won't make it, he won't beat anybody in the top 10 with that because all those guys have that and they have everything else too. And that's the problem with him. So it's easy to look at him like a top 10 talent, but he's really a top heavy talent. As in like, he has a lot of the attributes but he's more of a stab stuffer than an all-around player like you think that he is. And his all-around game gets exposed in things like this because this is what I'm saying. <clears throat> like, let's bring him up. Well, live performance. It's like, well, let's see who you're not winning that over in the top 10. Is he a better live performer than Chuck D or KRS-One? They're at 8 and 9, Mike. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's is he a, a better stab. lyricist than Nas, Jay-Z, or Rakim? Is he a better storyteller than Nas or Biggie? You get what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. no, that stuff that makes him top 10, he would get up there in the top 10, and he would lose all those attributes, and he's definitely losing the other shit like collaborations, impact, longevity. He's not beating those guys with that. The shit that he's strong at, there are more people that are just as strong as him and more versatile and been doing it longer. That's a fact. I think, too, those areas that he doesn't win... Like you said, the areas that he's strong in are tough for the top 10 for him. But the areas that he's not strong in, he's not beating top 25 people in that. You know what I'm no, saying? Like because he doesn't, cause yeah. he doesn't collab. Yeah, the, 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 the like collab, the collab, the classic songs, the voice. Um, the impact, I, Mike. The impact ain't like people saying. It's like, Mike, 
Slick Rick or Kendrick for impact? Well, I mean, yeah, I don't even think that's fair. But see, let's just say Drake. Okay, DMX, Mike. No, let's DMX say Drake Kendrick. or Kendrick for impact. You know what I'm saying? Drake. Like Drake. It's yeah. Wayne. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So it's like the stuff that he's strong at, he has what I like to call old school MCs, all time great attributes. Great lyricist, great storyteller, great album maker. That's not enough anymore. It's not 1991, and you don't know how to make Let the Rhythm Hit Him lyrically. So. Michael Williams with the Super Chat says, uh, hypothetically, if Damn was Kendrick's last album ever, would he be ranked above Lil' Kim? Uh, his body of work up until um, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers can't be discounted. So you're he would still be losing to somebody like her in the other category, yeah, though. Yeah, because the longevity part doesn't really change at that point. Because now we're judging somebody from a five-year window. And I know somebody's going to probably roll Biggie out. But Biggie passed away. It's a little different. You know and, what I'm and, saying? And, and, guess and what, he made longer-lasting material also. No, listen to what I'm about to say, Mike. If he don't die, Mike, he's going to be so much higher than six. Like, one. Yeah. Like... He took the L. Like, part of the reason why he's at six and not even, like, further up is because of his lack of longevity. You understand what I'm saying? Because right. it's not fair. He would be higher than six. There aren't six MCs that... there are, Like, the five guys that are ahead of Biggie, it's like, no, I don't think Jay's better than Big. I don't think Ice Cube's better than Big. No. I never did. Well... He left. They stayed. Yeah. I think if Big lives, yes. In my opinion... I Big think that yes, he things. would be better, but you know, Big based on what's things. there, I still got those guys ahead of him. The only thing you could argue about Big if he stays is that if he doesn't start making social commentary, yep. like a Tupac. He's one. You could say one. Pac, but yeah, he was going. Mm -hmm. uh, Andre Shashir with the super chat says, uh, "Just now joining, and my bad if y'all already discussed this, but did y'all hear Clark Kent say that the Chronic isn't a classic? He's tripping hard." Yeah, you know, again, that, that kind of goes to some that's of the that stuff. East Coast, that, Mike. Yeah, that's some of the stuff what, that Jay Short it? talks what, about. What did yeah. Jay Short call it? Yeah, uh, East Coast extra credit or something. That's a East Coast extra. Well, credit. see, my thing is, and what I would ask the legendary Clark Kent, and he's people with my uh, with one of my best friends growing up. Um, if the Chronic's not a classic, what albums do you think is a classic? If you want to know, it's not a classic. When you came back and did most of the beats on the 18th letter. Next question. Well, I would ask, too, like, what what 90s hip-hop albums would you deem classic? Because I think the easy way out of something like that is to just name earlier stuff, right? Mike, it's literally so absurd to say something like that from somebody like you. Yeah, him. it's a tough... You don't want to dignify that. That's yeah. absurd. That's He's probably not even the part super of a top sad. 10 rap album. He's not a part of a top 10 rap album on any way. And the closest he has is Reasonable Doubt. So you need to stop that. Esquire with the Super Chat says, uh, no other rapper on this list can say that they arguably dropped four classic albums in a row. Section 80 to damn. Five years off isn't enough to fall below 20. Again, KRS-1 did, and they kept going. So you, that's a lot. You, you guys really rate Kendrick on an Andre 3000 scale. It's very interesting. It's like... We're not looking at the whole. Andre with albums. Yeah, he's we're not, we're not looking at the whole. We're looking at pieces. You know what I'm saying? No, we got to look at the whole thing here. Yeah, and I know. And we How all felt this? like this he was I mean. on track. This is what I mean. So here's what people have to understand, too. And this is like, this is a ranking system. This isn't a live system. As in, oh, would Kendrick probably be better than some of these guys? Like, you know, like, like live, real time? Maybe. You know what I mean? That's the possibility. Right. But when ranking a list... You have to look at the totality of player. Like, here's something that I'll tell you, Mike. Part of why LeBron and Mike are number one and number two, Mike, is that you're not going to find two players, attributes, down the list that check boxes like those two guys. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, you're not. You're not going to find it. They do all the things. That's why they're one and two. Stop talking about him like he does all the things. He and doesn't. Yeah, it, it, he it, just it, tried to, Mike, this is what I'm saying. He just tried to do all the things. He failed. If we're going to continue bad. to put ifs in the category, right, or in the conversation, you know, if, rather. You're talking about what just happened. No, I ain't he talking about you. I'm talking did. about what Esquire said. If we're going to keep oh. putting ifs into the conversation, then what if he drops another album that's like Mr. Morale? So what happens then? I mean, what, if, what? what if he's done making great material? 
Right? Damn all that. You want to know exactly. what Mike? No, no, no. Watch it. this. Let's put Kendrick up against KRS-One right quick so I can show people what I'm talking about. All right, let's do it. KRS-One's at number nine right now. Watch this. Mike. Impact. I say KRS, but let's just say for argument, Kendrick, because he's very pivotal to, to his generation. No, no, let, let's say you give it to Kendrick. Yeah. Mike, watch this. Live performance. KRS. Mike, lyrics. Huh. Let's go, let's go Kendrick with that. Where? Where's my <laughs> philosophy of love's going to get you at? Where's well, the that's verse? songs. That's song. But it could be said bar for bar, Kendrick. Give me the verse. Oh man, we could go Phil. We can go his verse on Phil. We can go uh, Mad City. Shit. Okay. Yeah. I can go Mike. I I can literally go pick any verse off of KRS One's first four albums. Let's take like, this I one to the that. pole. Let's, Let's take do that. How about that? That's what I'm saying. Like you got to go to songs. It's like no, no, no. How about how about like '87 to '92? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. This should be wild, Mike. Like, like, Mike. Like, I'm sorry, Kendrick is not in the caliber of KRS One's. Like, KRS One's an A One lyricist. I'm trying to be, you know, objective here. You know. I get you. That ain't objective, Mike. He's more working on KRS One. He's not KRS One. I just want to see not what the people thing. say. Because, Never got him confused for that. You know, I don't want to be a hater, man. I've been called all oh, kind of things this shit, broadcast. Man. All right, so hey, I got hey. the uh, the poll up. KRS or Kendrick. Who's the better lyricist? We're going to, um, first to 50, same rules. Looks like Who's KRS a better storyteller, Mike? Kendrick. You sure? I am. Now that one, I'll give him over KRS. KRS is winning this lyrics thing, too. Okay. Uh, duh. <laughs> Try to tell you, I don't even know why we put that up. Storytelling would have been a better competition. We could do Classic that. Classic albums, Mike. Classic albums, I think that's KRS. Mike, it has to be. He did the same thing Kendrick did, except for he kept on doing it. Yeah. Mike, classic songs. KRS. Longevity of albums, Mike. Let's see. Hold on. Um, uh, that's KRS. Criminal Classic Minded. collaborations. Um... That is KRS. Career longevity quality. That is KRS. Voice. KRS. Do you see how he loses to a Titan, Mike? You can give him, Mike, matter of fact, look at this. You can give him impact. You can give him lyrics and storytelling. And he still lost everything else. Even if you were to give him lyrics. Like, if he loses lyrics, you understand he only took two off of KRS one? Are you sure? That's KRS. what I'm saying. So the only. KRS is, is actually winning. He don't hold up, Mike. So KRS is actually winning the storytelling, too, looks like, from the people. Uh, Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, although I think KDOT is top 10 all time, and the five-year break is a great argument. During the break, Nas dropped five albums, and Styles P dropped 10. Yikes. Yeah, and these guys aren't even in the prime of their careers, respectfully. And I'm saying that really respectfully. Like, this is overtime work that they're doing. They ain't got to be doing this. Those last five retired. albums that Nas dropped, like, he didn't have to do that, and he'd probably still be where he is. I mean, y'all don't have a problem that somebody that is 30 years into their career has dropped five years. I'm mean, sorry, five albums in the last five years or so, and a guy in his prime doesn't have that many albums? Period. No, Mike, you need to say it. No, Mike, you need to say it properly. In the last five years, Nas has recorded Kendrick's whole catalog. Yeah, essentially. That's why I was super chat. Like, like if you go from Nasir to now, he got just as much work as Kendrick, except for you know he came out in 1994, Mike. Exactly. <laughs> Been signed since absurd. 92 or 93. That's why I would super chat. So but 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 he's supposed to be. Like, but based on Billboard and some people, he's supposed to be over this man, right? Come on, man. This is absurd, Mike. It is and absurd. Better See, than Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers too. This is why I get so animated about the Andre Three Thousand stuff 
And I love Andre. Like, that was my favorite rapper, period, growing up. But the, the justifications that people make, it doesn't even make sense. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I mean, you just, you, you need to lock, start understanding. How about this? I'll give you a flip side to it. You know who has Kendrick problems, like, in reverse kind of? Cool G Rap. Like, Cool G Rap, part of Cool G Rap is at, where's G at? G's at 24, okay? Kane's at 16. Slick's at 11. Mm -hmm. L's at 10. KRS is at 9. Chuck D is at 8. Rakim is at 5. Those are his contemporaries. He's literally ranked lower than all his contemporaries. Now, Mike, bar for bar, only one I think got him is the God. And maybe not even some, and maybe not even all the time with that, okay? G rap don't do, I love G. G don't do all the things that his contemporaries did, Mike. No, you right. feel me? Yeah. He just don't. He doesn't have Kane or Rakim or KRS's voice. It's a fact, is it not? No, it's true. Because he had the impact that they've had. No, he is not. That's a fact. Yeah. Is his live performance as good as KRS's or Kane's? No, it's not. That's a fact. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. My, do his classic albums look like Rakim or KRS's? No, they do not, even though he has them. That's a fact. It's hard to take longer, personal preference out of it. No, they have it. That's a fact. That's why he's at 24. I think it's hard for some people why to Why we put, get to treat G this way, but Kendrick deserves some sort of pass? I think it's hard for some people to put personal preference, um, you know. You gotta let that shit go. It ain't like that with Sam. If G rap gotta be down there, so do Kendrick has. Esquire with the Super Period. Chat says, uh, so Rakim, Chuck, LL, and Kane didn't take 10-year-plus hiatuses. Uh, do any of them truly have four albums, solo run, better than Section 80 to Dan? Having a great four album run is not good enough in 50 years of hip hop to crack a top 10 list. Period. But this you is what I would ask that. Esquire. And Esquire, you're a very smart guy, right? The albums, Same yes, are great. But when you pull the songs out of those albums, are you willing to put 20 songs from those four albums against the people that you mentioned? It's one thing to be a great album maker, but at the end of the day, this thing is about songs and overall music. And do you think he really excels in that as well to the level of the elites? Where's the If I Rule the World? Esquire with another super chat says KRS One didn't drop four classics in a row. The Blueprint and uh, Edutainment are dope, but not classic. Proof, rap a uh, standout verse from the uh, from two LPs. Bar hold four. on, hold on. How about this? If you're gonna play that game, then damn, in Section Eighty ain't no classics. Period. So we in the same boat still. If you're gonna say that, no. If you're gonna say that about the last two BDP albums, I'm gonna go ahead and say that about the first Kendrick album and the last one. He only got two, two. So there you go with that. That ain't about to work over here, fam. Chris Daughter with the Super Chat. And, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and I'd like to remind Esquire, he must have forgot that after those four BDP albums, then KRS came with Return of the Boobap and the KRS One album. Yeah. Where Kendrick at? Where Kendrick at with that? That's what I'm saying. Stop yeah. kicking that shit like y'all don't know what time it is. Stop taking up for this man. Uh, Chris Daughtery with the Super Chat says, Coop, Mike, uh, not beating, I'm sorry, not beating uh, Rick Ross' only live performance and lyrics. His catalog is not better. I think he means that uh, Kendrick's not beating him, too. Um, we got to go ahead and get up out of here. I think I saw another Super Chat. It's been a very entertaining show, though. Uh, our man with the Super Chat says, Peace. DJ Clark Kent said his classics are NWA, Ice Cube, um, Snoop, Tribe, and Slick Rick. Also, that Doggy Style is better and high-powered uh, prevents the chronic from being a classic i see i i you know i used to have that this is when i was a kid i used to have that notion that a classic has to be a straight up flawless album with no bad songs or no subpar songs on it but i no longer believe that i think that's an unrealistic um it's an unrealistic uh expectation for that the blueprint's not classic Jigga that nigga Jigga's on there. Songs what? Very few albums. And, and first of all, <clears throat> I don't even know why Esquire's saying this. Like, I mean, Mike, don't you think Sex and Violence and Entertainment's better than Damn and Section 80? 
Definitely Section 80. Uh, Definitely Section 80. I think that there's a conversation when it comes to Dan, but again, I got to go revisit Dan. I haven't listened to Dan in a minute, and I don't know how well it, you know, has aged. Mm. I know it shut down things when it came out. I'll give it that. So, and that's just being objective. Jay Short with the Super Chat says, what makes Clark Kent a legend, Mike? <laughs> what songs or moments? Serious question, since he's questioning another legend. Uh, I mean, you know, finest comes to mind off top. What's that? Brooklyn's Finest is probably... Yeah, yeah, and record. the fact that he, he is the guy who put Jay on. So, I mean, he's legendary and legendary in, uh, yeah. DJ in New York City, too, before all that. So, that's what, you know. That's what I would say makes Clark Kent a legend. Michael Williams with the Super Chat says, uh, just to clarify, I don't think Kendrick is top 10. I was just playing devil's advocate because I thought Coop had him borderline top 10 before Mr. Morale. And before the I break. Do, yeah. The break is important because you're well, looking at somebody saying, people, that's on a trajectory. You know what I'm saying? I said this. I said, when I wrote the article after them, I said, he is hovering in the top 10 status and we will be able to determine where that status lies, depending on his next album. And then he took five years off and made the worst album of his career. Not top 10. Like, that's it. That's like, it's over. And really what happened? And let me tell you what happened. This is what I mean. Listen to, listen to the people that are ahead of him. Well, Mike, while you were gone, DMX died and his legacy grew. You feel me? DMX's legacy and legend grew in those five years. Like, he became more of a legend in that time you get what i'm saying the impact carry kanye became more of a legend in that time mike wayne these are people who are considered icons now like they got their iconic status while you were gone you get what i'm saying it's like no stop acting like this is a mike scarface his weight went up in the history of the annals common mike these people have become icons in the time that this man has been gone they went from being considered all-time great to be considered iconic stop making it seem like time doesn't matter Part of why they're iconic now is because their stuff's holding. Because they did a bulk of stuff and a bunch of stuff and a lot of classic stuff. Like Mike, Common's catalog better than Kendrick's. We've talked about it. Five years is a long time in hip hop. Straight up. Common got better hit records than Kendrick, and he's got just the same album lineup. He yeah. got shit that competes with Kendrick on every single level. I don't hear nobody talking about Common the way they talk about Kendrick. Mm. He got a better rap voice. He's just as good lyrically and can be storytelling wise. Made just as good of albums. Definitely been more collaborative. Yeah, I keep getting a whole bunch of <laughs> You've been alerts. doing it longer, Mike. You've been doing it longer, better. You're not better than Common all time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, somebody like Common, who, when Kendrick was making To Pimp a Butterfly in Good Kid, Mad City, was literally making the worst material of his career. Yeah, it's easy to start putting you over that guy. But that guy's catalog aged well while you were gone. You stopped doing stuff. His legacy grew. Yours didn't. You want to know why? Because your legacy's not that long. You've been here. You you've been here eleven years. You gave us five years worth of material, Mike. You know what? What, what, man, you, I, what, Jay, what Jay say on the table? That's one album every ten years. I can, nigga, divide. I can divide. I'm That's getting a lot of. Say too. I'm getting a lot of alerts uh, from our old Eminem discussions. <laughs> I guess they don't put the Eminem brigade out on me. Yeah, I'm ready for another um, cool. ultimate What's her name? debate. What's her name with all the with the 1.45 million followers? What's her name? Uh, I don't I don't know if it was uh, just pearly things. I think it was just a lot of people uh, from Eminem's camp must have chimed in or something. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm just saying, man. Anyway, though, I do think that Jack. You got to do more than make four great albums to supplant Common, though. Common has four great albums, and he's a better hit maker than you, and he has a better voice. He's just as good lyrically. Why? What makes Kendrick above Common? Well, this is the thing, man. I don't think that... I, I don't totally judge people by when they're batting a 1,000 and when they're hot and when they're on a run. Every, I mean, I don't say everybody gets hot and gets on a run. I think true greatness is measured when you're not at the peak of your talents. And I think that Common has so many dope albums that may not be considered classic, but they just accumulate to giving him an incredible catalog that... That's a sheer sign of greatness. I think that The Dreamer Believer is a dope album, especially for somebody at that point in their career. I think Black America, again, is a dope album for somebody who was 15-plus years in their career. 
what Nas just did with this King's Disease series and Magic. That's dope stuff to add on to a already illustrious career. You know what I'm saying? And I think those things matter. And that's just, like you said, effort. And I think that Kendrick could do those things, but he has put so much pressure on himself for everything to just be, you know, Mad City, that he stops making stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you're not... As an artist, you can't operate like Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre's a producer. You know what I'm saying? He can do those okay. things. He can take that time off. Look at it. No, this is why I'm bringing up Common, Mike. So let's look at it like this. Let's go down Common's catalog right quick. Mm -hmm. Can I borrow a dollar? Resurrection. One day it all makes sense. Dope album. Listen, Mike, album number four. Like water for chocolate. Mike, imagine if he stops right there. And takes a five year break. We don't get We don't talk B. about him anymore. Yeah. We don't get B. We don't get Finding Forever. We don't talk about him anymore. Stop yeah. making it seem like it doesn't matter. That shit matters, man. Shit matters. Stop making it seem like it don't matter. Mike, when I was talking about the Black Star shit, and I'm like, well, what are we following them for? They made one album when I was in high school. They ain't made nothing since. What's the fanfare for? I wasn't being shady. I was being dead ass honest. It's like, what have you done to make me a fan? To go spend my money on you. It's like, no, nah, fam, it don't, my, I don't know how your dollar works, but making a making an album that I liked in 1997, 98, when I was in high school, think how you keep me as a fan. I don't know what type of fans y'all are. Y'all let these niggas do anything. It's like, no, 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 no. We pulling phone checks over here, nigga, like it's jail time. And I dig like, that what? Black What's Star that? album. I dig the Black Star album, but truthfully, they're a whole nother group. You know what I mean? And I mean, we're talking about, damn, what is that, 24 years later? Yeah, you're going to be another group. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to be the same group. They right. did a good job. See, this is what I mean about, like, things change, the perspective change. You have to understand, when Kendrick was coming out, I was in my late 20s. You know what I'm saying? And so I remember what his vibe and his buzz was like. I was there for it. Mm -hmm. I was still very much, like, semi-retiring at that point. You know what I mean? And hearing somebody like him really, like, invigorated me and energized me. So it's like, I was there for all that. I'm not holding on to that feeling, Mike. I can remember, I told, I told this story. I literally left my job about going to see him perform before he even had an album out in Atlanta one time. I'm not holding on to that feeling, Mike. Yeah. That feeling was a long, long time ago. You know what I'm saying? And this is why I'm not holding on to that feeling. And this is what I mean about how the King's Disease run did change things. Nas literally just taught all of us. It's like, no, 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 stop holding on to that feeling. Yeah. That feeling. That feeling that you're looking for, you might actually be hurting your favorite artists and keeping them from searching for finding their newer and better shit. That's real. I didn't, Mike, like today, I didn't play The World Is Yours. I played legit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because I got know, legit to play. Like, I got a current classic Nas record to play. You know, the first rapper that made me feel like that is when Jay-Z retired, right? And when he came back, and, and, you know, I know people look at it now like, oh, Jay came back. He was never really retired. It really wasn't a foregone conclusion that he was actually going to come back. And when he came back and he made records like The Rock Boys, I'm sitting here thinking, like, this could have never happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad we have this record. Because to me, I know I say a lot of tongue-in-cheek stuff when it comes to Jay after the retirement, but that's all bonus time. Especially at that point, because that was kind of the lifespan of a rap career, what he was doing at that point. And so many dope records that he put out after he came back may not have existed. And what you're talking about, we got a five year break. Understand how many dope records were missed in a, in a, in a time period where you should have had two and possibly three albums. And you as a Kendrick fan understand how much dope Kendrick music you missed just from that break alone. This is what I mean, Mike. I was, <laughs> under, the impression, I was under the impression, Mike, that he was going to keep working the way that he worked because in every yeah. two, two and a half years, get a project. So you're right. Five years later, I think we would be anticipating like, hold on. So he's four. We'd be, we should be on album number seven or eight, right. Mike. Exactly. And that's and, not and too much to ask at that point. And, 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 and when you have, and this is what I'm about to say, and when you have time to sit and dissect somebody's catalog, it's like, well, I'm like, hold on. It's like, All Right is the only, like, All Right's the only big, big single that I see. Exactly. And and Loyalty, like these other singles, to, and to I be love humble, loyalty. Yeah. like, you're talking about stuff that spikes. I'm talking about stuff that holds. Right. His hits don't hold. What are Kendrick's five best records, Mike? 
and then go put them up against Rakim and Jay and KRS-One and LL's best records. Mike, he gonna lose every damn record. I think his hallmark record is... right up against Rock the Bells. Watch what people pick. Right. I think his hallmark record is Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, and I don't think that stands up That's to the That's not enough, game. Mike. That's yeah. not beating no dead presidents. No, the world is yours. No. no love's gonna get you. It ain't that. No. And I love it. That might be my favorite record that he did, but no. That's what I'm saying. His, his level, Mike, what made him great was the remarkable consistency that he was making the quality songs on the album. It's not that he was making a bunch of classic singles or classic songs. It was the remarkable consistency about the song work within the album framework. When you stop doing that, it's like losing your superpower. And see, my thing is when I look at his album output and the consistency, and we talk about classics in a row, and I got a person for you, Esquire, it looks a lot like Cass, Tribe, and uh, Kanye. But these people got the hit songs to go along with it and the classic songs to go along with it where there's a hole there for Kendrick. You got to admit that. As dope as his albums are, you don't want to go song for song with Cass, Tribe, or Kanye with Kendrick's catalog. You do not. How about this? You don't. Mike, <laughs> Mike, think about this. Kanye, without my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, would mop the floor with him. Yeah. Without my beautiful dark twist of fantasy. Think about this. That might be Kanye's best album, and Kanye doesn't need it against this guy. The first three Stop alone, that. man. Yeah. He don't even have to play nothing off my beautiful dark twist of fantasy, Mike. He can fade this guy on late registration, graduation, and a college dropout. He might be able to you do know. it off of two albums, honestly. Them records big, yeah. Mike. What, yeah. Mike, what he got for Jesus Walks? Or all falls down. Nothing. Like y'all y'all gotta stop tripping and making it seem like this man is bigger than what he was. Kanye can hit Kendrick with two words. And be successful. <laughs> you can hit him with two words with a lot of songs, Mike. Crack music. We <laughs> major. Yeah. Gold digger. <laughs> Jesus walks. Space shit. <laughs> right. You want me to keep going two words? I can let some two word Kanye songs fade in this dude. I can beat him with two word Kanye songs, and we're going to start off with two words and play two word Kanye songs. Still beat this guy. <laughs> Esquire with the super chat says So why is Slick Drive Rick? slow. Drive slow. <laughs> Esquire says, so why is Slick Rick number 11 from one classic? I'm not arguing. That is top 10. The point is, y'all don't apply that criteria consistently across generations. But look, that's what I'm saying. You talking about Slick not checking one box. Go look at all the other boxes and ask yourself if he checks every other box. Yeah, I mean. He checks the other 10 boxes. Mike, impact. No, he checks that box. Live performance. He checks that box. Lyrically, checks the box. Storytelling, checks the box. Classic songs, checks the box. Longevity of albums, checks the box. Longevity of songs, checks the box. Classic collaborations, checks the box. Career longevity quality, checks the box. Voice, checks the box, Mike. And he checks the box at a high level on all of them except for the album. It's true. What are we talking about? But you know what? I think Esquire holds albums obviously very high. That's one That's category. That's what I'm saying, Mike. We got to stop Mike. This ain't 94, Joe. We can't go back. <laughs> Chris Daughtery with the Super Chat says, Coop, uh, answer question. Ross, Kendrick, and a versus. Ross beats Ross Kendrick. Ross and a versus right? easy. Ross kill him. Yeah. He kill him. He kill uh, him. That's what I'm saying. When yeah. you start looking at it, Mike, it's like Ross plays BMF. What you playing? Ross plays Dice Pineapples. What you playing? Yeah. Ross yeah. plays Hustling. What yeah. you playing? Yeah, you're right. What you doing? What are we doing here? Ross put Mike, when Amsterdam come on, that's a whole vibe. Don't let Santorini Greece come back on. Nigga might put on a new Versace robe in front of this nigga. <laughs> Michael Williams with the super well, chat says. in front of Kendrick. Michael Williams says, fair enough, Coop. I don't disagree with any of that. Bonus question. Would you rather build your team around Jokic or uh, Luka? Yoke. Jokic He's a better pass. Hold on, one guy's a point guard, but the other guy's a better passer. So when you're the point guard and the center's a better passer than you, give me the center. Yeah, yo, yo, Jokic really destroyed the other night, man. I told you Jokic was better than Don than Luca last year, Mike. You were like, you bugging. It's like, no, I'm not. You see it, like Mike. You seeing the proof because he's taking my finals pick off the board right now. Yeah. And listen to what I said. <clears throat> and for everybody who thinks I'm a KD fan, oh no, Mike, this is unacceptable. <laughs> if he don't show up, Mike. Mm-hmm. They finally got critical on Katie. 
CJ. Six and seven, Mike. No, no, no. This these shooting percentages are unacceptable. This you bet. He better fix this shit now, Mike. I don't know how else to say it. You better fix this shit now. I ain't talking about book. Book fine. You want to know what? The smartest thing Kevin Durant might have ever done, if this keeps on happening, is go to Phoenix and be with Book. Because Book is out here looking like the next Kobe. And he's looking like an agent Shaq right now who needs Kobe. Mm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. You what? better fix this shit, Mike. Mike, you better fix this shit tomorrow. Ain't it oh, tomorrow? Okay. Better fix this shit tomorrow. I gotta watch my guy Jimmy close out the Knicks, man. Uh, CJ, a seven footer that shoots like this better not ever go twenty two percent. No, he's too good for this. Mm-mm. Uh, unacceptable. CJ Yesterday King was unacceptable. Super chat. That one for seven shit. He started <laughs> off like one for seven. Oh hell no! When I saw that, I was like, oh no. <laughs> like put this nigga on alert. <laughs> CJ K with the super chat says, I love this combo. Uh, borrow a dollar versus section 80. Resurrection versus good kid, Mad city. One day it all makes sense versus Pippa butterfly. Like water for chocolate versus damn. Match them up. Which are better. But see, the thing is, he said, just asking. You know how much stuff Common has after that? He still has B. He still has finding forever. He still has the dreamer and the believer. He still has black America again. It's not the same. <laughs> like, and honestly, some people view Electric Circus and Mr. Morale in the same light. And you left that album out. So, I mean, you know. Listen to what I'm about to say, Mike. And you know what I've said about Electric Circus? Electric Circus is way better than Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. <laughs> so it's Nostradamus. I told you, Mike, Nostradamus and Electric Circus. Oh, no. Mr. Morale made me look at those albums totally differently. It's like, <laughs> Alexa, play shoot, play shoot them up in last words right quick, because that shit ain't nowhere to be found on Mr. Morale. Alexa, play Come Close and, and, and put on a Dilla beat right quick. That's better than everything on Mr. Morale and the Big, big Steppers. I love everything. Aquarius, man. That's a beautiful record. Everything. Aquar- Aquarius is definitely better than everything on Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Mike. Like, that's a definite. I got to listen to Mr. Morale, man. It's coming up on the first year anniversary. Mike, don't do that unless you have... Um, your therapist phone number nearby because you're going to need to talk to somebody after you suffer like that. <laughs> well, let's get up out of here, man. Alone. There are people out here that will help you after you get done suffering. Like, I just don't want you to suffer alone. You don't have to suffer in silence through this last Kendrick album. <laughs> you too can get help after you listen. Let's get up out of here, man. We are um, we are like almost four hours in. Uh, Chris Daughtery with the Super mm-hmm. Chat says, It's about as long as the last album that he made. It wasn't any good, though. All right. Chris Daughtery says, Coop, uh, you don't think Teflon Don is a classic? You want to know what? Looking back on it, for a lot of people, it is. Mike, what if he plays Super High? What if he start playing the Maybach music series? What if he start playing Here I Am? Nah, man. You think Kendrick wanted with Rose? Nah. Don't fuck you. Nah. He don't want to. CJ Kidd that. with the Super Chat says, not arguing for Kendrick. Just wanted to know uh, for those four albums. Of course, Common is better. All right. Well, on that note, man, let's get up out of here, man. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying. Common's better because he worked at it, Mike. Yeah. He and Finding Forever, his fifth and sixth albums. I, I think, again, uh, what Kendrick and Dre have, have in common with the fans and their incredible talents, but a lot of the fans rate them on potential that hasn't fully been encapsulated, you know? And... and and I, I don't think that's fair to the people who've actually capsulated their potential. Like, how about this? Scarface isn't a big hit maker, neither is Kendrick. Where's the Never Seen a Man Die? Or a Man in the Pretty? Get what I'm saying? It's like, okay, mm-hmm. no, you don't have to be a hit maker to be all the way up there. You know what I'm saying? The guy at the top of the list isn't a big hit maker. Jay's hits are overrated. Listen to what I'm saying. Is so much better than his hits, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, think about when Excuse Me Miss come on, Mike. Great record. I love it. I loved it when I first heard it. Mm. Oh, yeah, and it's and it's, and it's it's Gaia. It's not Gaja, like he says, just for those who may not know. He's drinking a Gaia Pro Me. So that's a little it's Italian wine. It's pretty boutique. It's not Gaja, like he said, though. It's Gaia. He yeah. just didn't know. He was, he he was, was young. He was wine drinking. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Coop's here to correct and fix. He taught me stuff, Mike. He taught me stuff about balling. I can teach him stuff back. <laughs> and on that note, man, let's get up out of here, man. I'm watch the rest Ain't of this no game. Ain't no manicures on board to switch your planes. That shit changed my life, Mike. It's like they're getting manicures on a plane. I was like, yeah, you're going to jail. Yeah, it was, it was, it was something else. <laughs> All right, well, Friday, 
we're gonna get this whole thing in line for the station here. We're gonna um, notify you guys either on, on Twitter, community section here. We've had a great discussion. No, I think I think we should um, warm it up. Maybe here, just jump pre-game. in. Yeah, yeah. Pre 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 game for about thirty minutes to an hour. Talk okay. about a couple things. There might be a music project to review. Maybe hopefully possibly. Okay. We'll, well, see. we'll see what we can do. And um, shit, man, I'm about to watch this game. Who's playing tonight? Uh, the Knicks in Miami are playing right now. That's not a game, Mike. The real game starts at 10 o'clock. That was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> real game starts. It's not a game. <laughs> all right, peace, everybody. Appreciate That's y'all. That's all the New Yorkers are about to go home. <laughs> right. Eh, it'll be official. <laughs>